it's hard for the average person to imagine their time being reset daily. Existence would be limited to a single day. At first it would seem very lucky. There would be an opportunity to spend money without hesitation because the next day, everything would be back to normal. But in any case, that kind of life passes very quickly. There will be a desire to commit crimes in search of thrills without worrying about the law. And it will also bore the person as whatever he does will be reset. There is no point in saving or saving anything, including your own life. The person will try to escape from such a life and will constantly try to commit suicide. Then the person wakes up and goes back to the morning of July 7th, 2020th year. This is the kind of unique personal experience the main character has had. He lives more than 300,000 hours and that makes a thousand years. The girl at the bar listened to the guy's story with interest. She even took her eyes off her drink. The girl replied that his story was very interesting. She was surprised that he made it up just to flirt with her. She looked at the guy and told him that it was all very old-fashioned. The guy fervently began to convince the girl that everything he said was true. He pointed out that for all this time he was able to learn more than a hundred languages, master hacking techniques, and become the best in the world. The main character said to the girl, why would he who has lived for a thousand years flirt with her? She thought it was the first time she'd ever seen that kind of guy. At that time, the girl was texting her friend on the phone. She was expecting her friend to come soon. The guy was quietly drinking his cocktail and told the girl that her girlfriend wasn't coming. She was very surprised. She asked the guy how he knew her friend wasn't coming. The guy explained that the groom had suddenly returned and she was with him now so she couldn't come. The girl behind the bar cheerfully told the guy not to lie to her. The main character told the girl that her girlfriend would call her in 9 minutes and 13 seconds. The girl agreed with the guy and said she would wait. She sat down in her chair. A girl told the main character that if her girlfriend didn't call, he was dead. At that time, she accidentally elbowed a guy. The guy wasn't sober. He didn't like that the girl had hurt him. She looked at him warily. The bully grabbed the girl's arm. She didn't like it very much and shrieked. The bully told the girl that she had just maimed him and invited her to have a drink with them. The girl did not like such an offer and yelled at the guy to let her go. The bully grabbed the girl's arm anyway. He offered her more and more insistently to have a drink with them. That's when the protagonist intervened. He shouted at the bully to stop. Wu Chen looked at the bully calmly. He told him to come over to him. The bully didn't like the main character's request. He asked him what he wanted to do. The bully was very angry. He threw his cigarette butt at the protagonist. Wu Chen didn't even dodge. He sat still. The cigarette butt did not hit him. The bully was very surprised. He realized that if the guy wasn't dodging, he had predicted that the cigarette butt wouldn't hit him. Eventually, the bully got very angry and attacked the guy with fists. Wu Chen very quickly and professionally dodged the punch and the bully didn't hit him. After all this, the bully was very much surprised. He couldn't understand how the guy dodged. The protagonist then dodged and struck back at the bully's face. Immediately after hitting the protagonist, the bully collapsed to the ground without strength. Lying on the floor, the bully yelled to his friends to beat up the protagonist. Wu Chen turned around and saw a crowd of menacing and armed bandits walking through the bar, and he thought it was about time. The bandit boss asked the protagonist how he dared to touch his man. The boss of the bandits shouted menacingly to the protagonist that he was now a dead man. Wu Chen went to a boss named Liu Huqi and said that he was very rude. The protagonist asked Liu Huqi if Zhao Guaiqi was training his subordinates like that. The boss asked the protagonist how he knew his older brother. At that time, the guy called Zhao Guizi. He said that he had just been provoked by his brother Liu Huzi. Zhao was very surprised by such a call. He asked the guy from there how he knew his number. Wu Chen said calmly to Zhao that if he didn't want any trouble, he should follow his instructions, and they would meet in May. Liu Huzi was very surprised. He didn't understand how the guy knew about the May meeting. At the end of the conversation, Wu Chen told Zhao to teach his men manners. He promised that next time the outcome would not be as easy as it is now. Wu Chen then threw his phone into Liu Huzi's hands and told him to talk to his brother. Liu Huzi ended up talking to his brother and promised that he would apologize right away. After that, the bandit leader and his subordinates apologized to Wu Chen. He answered them good-naturedly that he was in a good mood today, so they could all leave. Everything that happened really surprised the girl. She couldn't understand who that guy was. Suddenly, she heard the phone ringing and saw that it was her friend calling. The girlfriend called a girl named Qian Qian and said that her boyfriend suddenly came back so she could not come to the bar. The girl clearly remembered her recent conversation with the protagonist where he predicted the girlfriend's call. Wu Chen told Qian Qian to go with him. Qian Qian was surprised as she didn't know what she should do in such a situation. The two of them went down to the garage. The guy got into an expensive red car and the girl asked if it was his car. The guy confirmed that he was stealing the car because the car would be back tomorrow. 
and he said goodbye to the girl. Qian Qian asked the guy if he would let her go home by herself. Wu Chen replied that she was only eight points, and that was after her makeup. The girl was very much taken aback. She didn't like what he said to her. Qian Qian asked for the protagonist to wait. She turned her back on him. A girl decided to prove to her boyfriend that she is beautiful in her own right. First, she wiped the makeup off her eyes. Jiang Jiang then used a napkin to further wipe off the makeup from her face. Afterward, the girl looked at the guy and asked how she looked now. He thought about it and decided he would give her a nine. Wu Chen suggested that the girl go to his house to make sure he wasn't lying. Jiang Jiang told him that if he did anything strange, she would call the police. The protagonist smiled cheerfully at her. They got into his car and drove down the street. After the night was over, morning came and the sun rose and illuminated the city. Daylight illuminated the guy's room with clothes scattered around him. Wu Chen woke up and looked with a gaze without any interest around him. The protagonist thought to himself that everything was starting again for him. He said goodbye to the girl to himself. Suddenly he heard the voice of the girl he had met yesterday. She came out of the shower. Zhang Zhang reminded the guy that they said the 7th of July would happen again. She showed him the phone and asked him to explain how it was July 8th today. The protagonist looked at his watch. He saw that it was the morning of July 8th. Wu Chen was very surprised. He realized that the next day had finally arrived. The guy realized that the 8th of July had come for him for the first time in his life. Zhang Zhang knocked loudly and insistently with her hand on the bathroom door. Wu Chen was silently standing there. The girl loudly demanded from the protagonist that he should not hide and come out. She reminded him that he had promised to explain everything to her. The guy didn't listen to the girl. He stood and relaxed in the shower. Everything that had happened surprised him. Wu Chen was very much surprised he realized that he was awake and time had indeed continued its course. He was very much glad that he was able to escape from the endless cycle of time. The protagonist was very happy that he got out. He said hello to the world around him again. Then he got a message from the system that he had passed the millennium test. The protagonist was glad that he was finally able to activate the system. The system gave his baseline readings and the rest of the information. The guy was unclear what the option to reset space and time was. The system reported that the host could lock and reset the time to a countdown point of 7 o'clock in the morning. The boy realized that he had been trapped in time before, but now he would be in control of it. He remembered that before, he was just an ordinary student with no special talents. Like everyone else, he drove a car, knew how to cook, and had hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Now all of his skills were almost to their maximum. Wu Chen realized that thanks to his endless rebirth, he had benefited greatly. The protagonist, standing in the shower, realized that after normalizing time, he would be able to apply his skills. Zhang Zhang kept breaking into the bathroom. She thought the guy had lost his mind. Suddenly, the door opened and Wu Chen came out of the bathroom. The girl asked what happened to him. The main character said he was doing fine. It was his best day in the last thousand years. Zhang Zhang told him not to talk nonsense. Suddenly, there was a noise at the hotel room door and loud banging. The guy standing next to the girl, he heard the people on the other side of the door yelling that they stole their boss's car. Zhang Zhang walked to the front door, looked through the peephole she watched carefully. She saw a group of very angry bullies. They demanded to open the door or they would kick it down. Zhang Zhang told the guy that it was his fault he stole the car, and now they were going to be killed. He smilingly excused himself that he didn't know that time would be back to normal today. Wu Chen said calmly that he had stolen Wang Zhuanyuan's car. The girl asked who Wang Zhuanyuan was. The guy said that 15 years ago, Zhuan Yuan was a student in Dunhai City. He had a promising future in front of him. It happened that Wang Zhuan Yuan's parents were maimed because of demolition. He beat the thugs to a pulp and got three years in prison. After getting out of prison, Zhuan Yuan made a great career in crime due to his intellectual ability. As a result, Wang Zhuan Yuan became a very important person in Dunhai City. Zhang Zhang said that the protagonist crossed the path of a dangerous man. Wu Chen told the girl that Wang Zhuan Yuan is not the biggest problem. The main character said he called himself Mr. Li's name yesterday, and it's really very dangerous and bad. Wu Chen added that if it was used unwisely, he would be chased all over Dunhai. Zhang Zhang was very much excited. She asked the guy what he was going to do. The protagonist thought about it and said it was no big deal. He had an idea. Zhang Zhang was surprised at the guy's calmness. She wondered what he had decided to do. Wu Chen said he would reset the time and that would be enough. He instructed the system that he wanted to use time reset. The system indicated that the host reset the time for the first time on July 8th, 2020th year. The protagonist spent one point to reset the space and time process. After that, the reset was successfully completed. The guy went back to this morning. A girl with a phone stood in front of him and demanded an explanation. 
The protagonist rejoiced as he realized that time had indeed reset. Jiang Jiang demanded the guy to tell her everything quickly. He gently put his finger on her mouth. Wu Chen told the girl that there was no time to explain and to get dressed quickly and put a finger to her mouth. The girl didn't like it and bit the guy's finger. He yelled that it hurt. Zhang Zhang told the guy that if he didn't want a serious relationship, you can't just send her away so quickly. The guy explained that he stole the car of a man named Wang Juan Yuan, and he is a bandit. His men would be here soon. Wu Chen added that given the girl's status, she had nothing to fear, but he's just an ordinary man. Jiang Jiang was very surprised. She asked the guy if he knew who she was. The girl added that she wouldn't pretend anymore. If the guy begs him, she will help him with Wang Zhuan Yuan. The guy pressed the girl sharply and hard against him, he decided to influence her. Wu Chen asked the girl if he should beg her like she had begged him last night. Jiang Jiang already looked at the guy more gently and calmly. She was no longer angry. The girl shoved the guy away and said he'd wait to be killed. The guy said he'd disappoint the girl. He knows someone who can handle the problem easily. Zhang Jiang asked with surprise at the guy who exactly he was referring to. The main character said he had this girl in mind. She's supposed to help him. After a little thought, he added that this was no ordinary girl, but a very interesting one. The main character was fleeing with all his might with his girlfriend in a stolen red car and being chased by bandits. Wu Chen realized that he needed to accelerate and to escape. He pressed the gas pedal. One of the thugs leaned out of his car window and yelled for the guy to stop. Jiang Jiang shouted scared that the bandit had a gun. The guy told her it was even more interesting that way. The protagonist decided to squeeze the most out of the car he shouted to the girl to buckle up. In the end, the red car with the protagonist and the girl took the lead. Jiang Jiang told the guy he was crazy. She asked him where he was going so fast. He told her that if he got caught, he was dead. One of the bandits shouted to the driver to drive faster as they need to block the boss's car. The girl's phone rang. She looked up and saw it was an unknown number. Jiang Jiang picked up the phone. She didn't have time to talk because the guy took the phone away from her. Wu Chen said confidently on the phone that he was giving Mrs. Li a clue. He told her that there was a traitor on her side and that she would lose the argument. She was very surprised and asked the guy who he was and how he knew about the case. Wu Chen said he had his own source of information and even had details about her younger brother's case. At the same time, the bandits drove up from the side and began ramming the race car. The main character said on the phone to have someone from her company meet him and they would talk face to face. After a bit of silence, she said she would find out who he was. At the same time, bandits in jeeps caught up with and surrounded the protagonist's race car. Zhang Zhang shouted very scared to the guy that the bandits were catching up with them. The protagonist shouted back at her that the bandits wouldn't work out. After that, the guy decided to make a sharp maneuver, he decided to brake sharply. Wu Chen told the girl he was performing a maneuver called Tokyo Drift. At the same moment, the car with the protagonist turned sharply and unexpectedly to the side. The driver in the car with the bandits said that the protagonist was driving hard. A co-worker yelled at him to give him a little more gas. Thanks to the guy's clever maneuver, his car took the lead. Wu Chen used the speed drift technique a couple more times on the turn. The main character after the maneuver greatly increased the gas bandits could not keep up with him. Zhang Zhang was very scared because of driving so fast and because of the chase. They drove up to the girl's house. The guy told her they had arrived. The girl calmed down a bit. She looked out the window and saw her house. For some time the car was still parked outside the house, the guy and the girl sat silently. Jiang Jiang asked the protagonist how he knew where she lived. Then the girl said she didn't care. She said that the guy would start telling her again about the thousand years and so on. Jiang Jiang opened the door and got out of the car. She decided to ask the guy something. A girl told a guy that he was a good driver and where he learned to drive like that. He told her that he had been practicing all his life. Leaving the girl told the guy she didn't know how many times he died to learn to drive like that. Wu Chen told her that she didn't need to learn to drive beside him because he had many attempts and she only had one. Jiang Jiang told the guy to give her his phone number. She wanted to call him when she was in the mood. The guy didn't even wait to hear what she was going to say next. He took off in the car. Jiang Jiang watched the car with the protagonist departing. The girl thought to herself that she and her boyfriend spent the night together, and he didn't even give her his phone number. Jiang Jiang thought the whole thing was a setup by her friend. She couldn't understand how the protagonist knew where she lived. She decided she'd ask her friend about everything so the guy wouldn't outplay her. Half an hour later in her company's office, her supervisor was primping and prepping for a meeting. Everyone in town knew Lee Jobin as a successful businesswoman, but few people knew about her complicated past. Her younger brother is the young Mr. Lee who controls all affairs in Dunhai. Wu Chen thought to himself that he knew a lot about Miss Lee and that she was a very spectacularly beautiful girl. Lee Jobin sat in her office in the CEO's office. The assistant told Miss Lee that she had a visitor. It was the main character. 
Principal Li told her assistant that he was free. Wu Chen stayed in her office. The protagonist stood and waited for the assistant to leave. In the meantime, Mrs. Li was studying his documents. Miss Li read in the main character's biography that he is 22 years old and a computer science graduate. The woman looked at the guy and said that he still had a younger sister named Wu Jiao who was in high school. Wu Chen told the woman that she did a good job on one call was able to find out so much information. The woman tore up the main character's biography sheet. She told him that he was an ordinary man and could not have known about the dispute. She looked piercingly and testingly at the guy and asked who he was. The protagonist told the woman to think of him as an information trafficker. Principal Lee looked at him silently. She didn't understand where he was coming from. The guy told the woman he knew a lot of interesting information. He offered to give her the name of the traitor for $10 million. A woman said that a strange man came to her house asking for money. She opened the door discreetly. Miss Lee pointed a gun at the guy and asked if he thought she would agree. She held the guy at gunpoint and told him if he didn't tell her anything interesting, he'd part with his life here. The guy calmly told her that he knew the woman would have a gun. He asked her if she could shoot him without ammunition. He had the bullets in his hand. The woman only now looked at her gun and noticed that it had no magazine. Did Mrs. Lee think the gun was under the table and when would the guy have time to remove the magazine? She thought back, and it seemed to her that the guy could have done it a little earlier. The protagonist told the woman that he was only peddling information that he had only rented the store. The guy took the gun from the woman and put the magazine back in it. He slipped the gun back to the woman. Wu Chen added that he didn't want to hurt her and was only here for the money. The protagonist thought to himself that to get close to a woman, you need some kind of motive. Mrs. Lee sat motionless. She still hadn't touched the gun. She asked the guy what else he knew. The guy told the woman she was the eldest daughter of the Lee family, but she couldn't escape the curse of being in her brother's shadow. The woman's mother always helped her. She threatened to kill her daughter if she didn't marry Ding Zhuilong. Mrs. Lee wanted to run away but didn't because she was worried about her mother. Mrs. Lee wants Ding Zhuilong to give up on her, so she calls in some fake boyfriends. The first of these guys committed suicide and the second was sent to a mental institution. The third guy went to prison and he may never get out. Dong Zhuilong is a cautious man. He's the one who dealt with all of Miss Lee's boyfriends. Wu Chen told the woman that she had made a secret bet with Dean Joy Long. Each of them opened a secret business, and the winner would be the one whose business would be successful after five years. At this, Mrs. Lee does not know that Ding Zhulong poached someone from her side made him her spy. The protagonist stopped and asked the woman if he should continue. Mrs. Lee was silent, and after a brief pause, she pulled out her checkbook. She wrote the guy a check for the amount he asked for, and she was willing to pay for the information. Mrs. Lee handed the guy a check and demanded that he tell her who the traitor was. The guy told the woman he would. There was a brief pause. At this time, someone knocked on Principal Lee's office. She gave permission to enter. Her senior assistant, Feng Yan, walked into the office. He was carrying some documents in his hands. The aide came to the table and told the woman that she needed to sign these papers. The protagonist grabbed the assistant, but he wanted to break free but couldn't. Wu Chen plopped the aide down on the table with his head and shouted to the woman that this aide was the traitor. Feng Yan was startled and asked the guy what he was talking about. Wu Chen held a gun to his head. The protagonist asked his assistant where the $5 million in his Swiss account came from. The assistant denied everything. Wu Chen shouted to the assistant that he couldn't get anything out of him. He pulled his phone out of his pocket. After that, the guy found a contact with the name Ding Zhuilun in the list of numbers and called him. After the call, Ding Zhuilun answered. He thought that it was his assistant calling him. So he asked if he had any important information. Wu Chen threw the aide to the floor with a strong punch and asked if the aide would still refuse. Miss Li told the assistant that he had made a lot of money in recent years, but she didn't pay attention to it. She didn't realize that he would sell her for only five million. The aide told the woman fearfully that although he had taken the money, he had something important to tell her. The protagonist told the woman not to believe the words the aide told her. Wu Chen handed the woman a gun. He told her to decide what to do with the assistant. After a little thought, Mrs. Lee told the assistant to leave as she didn't want to see him again. The deputy was overjoyed and in a frightened voice he thanked the woman. Then the assistant ran out of the office with all his might. Wu Chen told the woman that he thought she would kill him. Miss Lee said she didn't want to do it with her own hands. After that, the woman looked suspiciously at the protagonist. She said that she still suspected him. She suggested that he might have been sent by Ding Ju Long. Wu Chen told the woman that she was very distrustful. He has a way to dispel her doubts. She asked how he would do it. The main character told the woman to let him be her fake boyfriend. Wu Chen told the woman that Ding Zhulong cared a lot about his reputation. He wouldn't risk it for the woman's victory. Miss Lee said she's only had three fake boyfriends in her entire life. Each one of them screwed up. The protagonist told her that he knew about it. He added that he had many ideas and plans that he wanted to make a reality. 
Mrs. Lee put a gun to the guy saying it would be a shame if he passed away very early in life. She asked the guy sternly if he was afraid. She was still holding him at gunpoint. Wu Chen told her that if she wanted to kill him, she would have pulled the trigger a long time ago. The woman looked at the boy carefully and piercingly. She liked his answer. Mrs. Lee told him she liked him very much. She put the gun away. Smiling, the woman hugged the guy, and he was told that all couples have their selfies together. They took a cell phone photo together. The guy realized that the girl could use the photo to get back at Ding Long. The woman told the protagonist that from this day forward, he would officially be her boyfriend. He will officially work as an assistant. She asked Wu Chen to tell her what he knew about her brother. The protagonist said that under her brother's rule are three of China's top international clubs. These clubs are very big and posh where the rich Chinese youth go. Clubs offer all kinds of entertainment and opportunities to spend your leisure time. This is the reason why clubs are always full of guests and customers. Mrs. Lee said she was aware of her brother's affairs. The boy replied that the crown leadership had broken all the rules. That's why the investigation into their case started three months ago. Wu Chen said that according to his information, the entire network will be shut down in a month at the latest. The woman asked the guy what he said. The protagonist replied that all this would be a problem not only for her brother, but for the whole Li family. After the club chain closes down, Li Jutai will go to jail. The guy added that if need be, the Li family would cut all ties with Li Jutai. Miss Li told the guy that this information was very dangerous. She clarified whether what the guy told her was true or not. The main character told the woman not to even ask him about it. At this time, Mrs. Li's former assistant came to a club called the Crown of the East China Sea. The aide frightenedly told Representative Li Jutai everything that had happened to him. Wang Zhanyan was a close associate of Mr. Lu Rutai. He said that the protagonist maimed Zhao's men, stole his car, and defamed Mr. Li's name. Zhao Guanzi was standing next to him. He asked the assistant strictly how Wu Chen knew his phone number and how he knew about the May meeting. Li Jutai was the eldest grandson of the Li family. He demanded that his subordinates bring the protagonist to him. He promised to strangle him with his own hands. Suddenly, the door to Li Jutai's office opened and Mrs. Li walked in. She walked towards her brother. Everyone present was very surprised by Mrs. Li's arrival. They did not expect to see her at this time and place. Li Jutai, everyone else, greeted Mrs. Li. She walked straight to her brother's table. At the same time, Li Jutai commanded everyone to put out their cigarettes. His sister couldn't stand the smoke. Li Jutai asked apprehensively to his sister why she had decided to visit him, and if something very important had happened. The woman told her brother that there was someone she wanted him to meet. Wu Chen came in after her. The protagonist told Li Chu that he borrowed his car yesterday for a drive. Now it's parked in an underground parking lot. After that, Wu Chen returned the car key to the angry Li Jutai. One of Li Jutai's associates pointed out the protagonist and told the boss that he had introduced himself by his name. The protagonist looked at Li Jutai and thought that he was very powerful compared to Li Zhlobin. From childhood, Li Zhlobin had a very tough temper. She was always protective of her younger brother, but she was also harsh with him. It is for this reason that her brother Li Jutai fears his sister and respects her. The silence was interrupted by Li Jutai. He asked his sister who was the guy who came with her. Miss Li did not like such a question from her brother. She grabbed his ear with all her might. Then Mrs. Lee shouted rudely to her brother that it was not a boyfriend who had come with her, but his future brother-in-law. Li Jutai was very surprised at such words. He could not believe that the woman had brought her son-in-law with her. The others present were also amazed. They couldn't believe that the guy they were looking for was now under Miss Lee's protection. The associates couldn't believe that the protagonist would now be a relative of the Lee family. Li Rutai told his sister if she had decided to put on an act again. He told her that Wu Chen was probably her next fake boyfriend. He asked his sister why she chose him. Mrs. Lee hesitated. She didn't know what to say to her brother now. That's when Mrs. Lee told the main character that she hasn't been feeling well lately. The woman stood across from the protagonist and said it was his fault. The main character asked her if it was too much drama for such a scene. The woman asked the guy if he was afraid that Li Jutai would kill him. Wu Chen told Mrs. Lee calmly that he was not afraid of her brother at all. The protagonist told the woman that her brother had apparently had a stroke. Li Jutai looked really bad. Li Jutai was very surprised. He thought his sister was pregnant by the protagonist. At this, Li Jutai looked at Wu Chen and realized that this guy was definitely not his sister's type. Boss Li realized that his sister was attracted to older men, but not young guys like the main character. Li Rutai pondered he assumed that Wu Chen had simply taken advantage of his sister. He thought to himself that love very often blinds and reduces a person's intelligence to zero. Li Jutai thought to himself decisively that he needed to save his sister. Out loud, he asked the protagonist how on earth he met his sister. 
Wu Chen said that three months ago, Miss Li was looking for employees for her firm among university graduate students. The woman was surprised she remembered that this really happened, and she couldn't understand how the main character knew about it. Li Jutai told his sister that she had only known the guy for three months. Did she really know everything about him in that amount of time? Li Jutai told the sly guy that he left the club yesterday in the company of some girl. Mrs. Li was very surprised at such words. She couldn't understand what kind of girl was with the main character. Wu Chen calmly replied that he left with a girl named Mu Qian Qian, and she is Mu Shihai's daughter. He runs the Mu Biomedicine Corporation. The protagonist told Li Jutai to thank him. One of the boss's underlings wanted to beat up Mu Qian Qian yesterday, which would have had tragic consequences. Wu Chen said that Mu's company is one of the most influential on the East Coast. The company is very rich. The protagonist said that you can fight against this company, but you'll have to pay a big price for it. Li Jutai looked at the main character for a very long time. After that, he squeezed out words of gratitude. Mrs. Li thought that she didn't expect her brother to panic at the words in the main character. She said out loud that enough talking. A woman told her brother and his associates that someone wanted to take over the Crown Club chain. The accomplices present were very surprised by this information. Li Jutai said excitedly that this was the first time he had heard about it. He added that everything had been settled earlier. Wu Chen replied that he shouldn't have sent the video to anyone through the dark net. He also added that the boss should break off his relationship with Zi Hu. Mrs. Li was very angry. She shouted at her brother that his relationship with Zi Hu would not be good. The brother started to justify himself. The main character told Li Jutai that his sister was right. It was Sehu who stabbed him in the back this time and blamed it on him. The boss was very surprised. Even his sister didn't know anything about his relationship with Sehu. He couldn't understand how the protagonist knew about it. The guy told Li Jutai not to be so nervous. He's only here because of Mrs. Li. He doesn't want to see this beautiful lady sad. Li Jutai was very angry to hear these words from the main character. Finally, the boss shouted to the guy that if he didn't explain everything to him right away, he wouldn't get out of here alive. Mrs. Li shouted at the boy to calm down and let the protagonist speak. Her brother replied that he wouldn't let her get hurt by Wu Chen. Wu Chen said he's about to say information that only a couple people in China know about. A couple of months ago, a policeman named Lai Bao took up the case of the Crown Club chain. The main character took a pen and started writing something down on a sheet of paper. It was important information. Wu Chen said that a couple of investigators disguised themselves as guests. The others broke into the clubhouse and collected a lot of evidence. The protagonist kept writing something on a piece of paper. It was a list. Wu Chen told the boss that he had a list of those who went undercover. Li Jutai was very much astonished. He saw some familiar names on the list. After a bit of thought, Li Jutai shouted to his sidekick to get everyone up and ready weapons. The boss then told another subordinate to take his guys and check the list immediately. At the same time, Li Jutai looked at the protagonist and told him that if he made a mistake, he was finished. Wu Chen was completely calm. He was not afraid of anything and the guy calmly sat down on the couch. The protagonist asked calmly to his boss where he spends so much money. Li Jutai waited for information from his associates. He was nervous and smoked a lot. After waiting, he was eventually brought a video camera with a recording. The boss watched and analyzed the video carefully. He realized that the protagonist had told him the truth about the infiltrators. Li Jutai smashed the camera out of anger. He told his accomplices to catch all the people on the list. Wu Chen said calmly that no one on the list should be touched. If any of these people go missing, the police will start a law enforcement raid on the boss. Li Jutai was very angry. He asked the protagonist angrily what he should do now. The guy asked the boss if he wanted to end up in jail or if he would finally turn on his head. Li Jutai was still looking at Wu Chen with irritation. He asked him strictly what he knew. The main character told the boss to tell his men to come back. The boss looked at the boy with suspicion and distrust. He hesitated. Li Jutai asked judiciously to the protagonist what he should do next. Wu Chen said very calmly to the boss to apologize to him and ask for forgiveness. The protagonist will sort it out. The protagonist thought to himself that if he had to fit into this, he might as well show his boss some respect. Mrs. Li told Wu Cheng insistently that they were family and that he should help Li Jutai. The boy replied that the boss didn't see him as part of his family. Li Jutai realized it was time to make a choice. He really needed the help of the protagonist. After gathering his thoughts, the boss told Wu Cheng happily that he was now their man. The protagonist laughed. Li Jutai explained that he was angry at the protagonist because he thought he was cheating on his sister. Wu Chen said that he was not sure if the boss's words were sincere. After a little thought, the protagonist said he would only help the boss because of his sister. Wu Chen began to clearly give instructions to Li Jutai. He demanded that he kill Shi Hu first. As long as he's alive, everything will go wrong. 
Sehu most often spends his time in the villa with his girlfriend and drugs. He can die accidentally from an overdose. Li Jutai liked the idea of a murder from the main character a lot. Wu Chen said that the boss must get all the evidence that Lai Bo has. That's the only way he can ensure his safety. Li Jutai liked that idea. He said that he had to capture Lai Bo immediately. The protagonist told the boss that you can't just grab Lai Bo because he's a very important figure. Wu Chen gave me the address of the safe where Li Jutai's dirt is kept. The documents are there in a single copy. The boss was very surprised he didn't understand how the protagonist could know such details along with the password. The main character told the boss to tell the old man everything, especially about the Zi Hu case. This case involves the Wei family as well. The Li and Wei clans have been feuding for a very long time, and there is an ongoing war between them. Wei has always had the advantage. For this reason, the boss of the Li clan sought the support of the Ding clan. The protagonist said that Li Jutai's group gave the Wei family a good opportunity to deal with them. That's why we'll have to talk to the old man. Li Jutai said confidently that he would talk. He waited to see what else the guy would say. Wu Chen finally told the boss to burn down his crown club. Li Jutai was very angry and surprised at such a proposal. He could not agree to it. The protagonist said that just a small arson is required when this news hits the media to make it look like Li Jutai himself was a victim in this situation. Wu Chen told the boss to fulfill all these conditions then he would guarantee success. Mrs. Li walked over to her brother and grabbed his ear. She wanted to influence him to do the right thing. The woman held the boss by the ear and asked him strictly if he understood everything. He said he understood everything. At the same time, the phone rang on the desk. The boss got distracted and decided to pick up the phone. Li Jutai picked up his cell phone to receive a call from one of his associates at the casino. The boss asked Monday what the losses were. He heard the answer that two billion was lost. Li Jutai shouted that he was leaving immediately. The boss told the audience that something had happened and he needed to get to the casino right away. Wu Chen asked the boss if he had gotten a call now about Shen Guangjun who owned Fushen Aluminum. Li Rutai was very surprised at how the guy knew that. At that evening time, life in the casino was in full swing with plenty of guests. Inside the casino, there were many customers and gaming tables all around reignited the game. At one of the tables, there was a very gambling dice game with waitresses serving drinks. At the same time, Wu Chen, Miss Li, and her brother entered the hall. The protagonist said that Shen Guangjun had arrived in eastern China yesterday in search of gambling experts. This was to help him cover up his recent disgrace. Wu Chen said that if a man screws up in a casino, nothing can save him. He automatically becomes a loser. Li Jutai decided with Xie Hu to build a business based on connections to cheat small gangs in gambling. The casino lets the player win a little at first, and then takes every last penny. Shen Guangjun lost a couple million in the casino. He made connections all over the world and found other people who had lost money just like him. After that, Shen Guangjun reported the matter to the Wei clan. During the investigation, secret camera tapes were found. As a result, the Wei clan united with other families to destroy the Li family. Wu Chen said that under normal circumstances, Shen would not have hired experts. But now he realizes that Li Jutai is almost defeated. Boss Li Rutai was very angry. He shouted that Shen Guangjun would be very sorry for crossing him. The protagonist replied to him that Li Jutai was extremely agitated. Near the table with the game of cards stood Shen Guangjun. He was watching the game. One of the players was making a big bet. He looked at his cards and realized that he had lost. The player realized that he had lost. The defeat made him feel very bad. Shen Guangjun shouted that he was now very rich. He started raking chips from the table. Then from afar, Shen Guangjun heard someone call him lucky. He turned around and saw Li Jutai along with his companions. Boss Li Jutai looked very carefully at Shen Guangjun and the chips in his hands. After calming down a little, Shen Guangjun said that he had won a lot of money and asked if that was okay with Li Jutai. Shen Guangjun said that many experts took turns playing, but they were losing. Apparently, Boss Li has a lot of talented employees. The protagonist said he didn't think so. He was standing near the gaming table and going through the cards. Wu Chen went through the cards in the deck little by little and tossed them up. The protagonist juggling the cards turned to Shen Guangjun. Wu Chen unfolded the deck of cards with a fan and suggested that Shen Guangjun play along with him. Mr. Shen was very surprised at such a suggestion from the protagonist. He asked Li Jutai why the protagonist was speaking for him. Shen told Boss Li that he had already lost two million to him today. Does he really want to keep going? Li Jutai was surprised. He didn't realize that Wu Chen was also a gambler. Mrs. Li said she wasn't sure. Shen thought that masters and gambling experts anticipate their opponent's actions through displays of emotion. He realized that the protagonist would not have the experience for such a skill. Shen looked at Wu Chen and realized that just by looking at the arrogant expression on the guy's face, one could guess what he was thinking. 
Mrs. Lee approached the main character and wanted to say something to him. A woman asked a cautious guy if he was into gambling. He told her he could beat any casino in the world. The protagonist sat down at the table and prepared to play. His opponent was a gambling expert. The examiner glanced at the guy and noticed that he wasn't looking at the cards at all. The protagonist thought and revealed his card. It was the ace of spades. The expert told the protagonist to start playing first as his hand is bigger. Wu Chen didn't hesitate long and threw in his chips for a bet of 500,000. The opponent said confidently that he was backing the bet and play continued. In the next round, the protagonist again made a bet of 500,000. He waited for an answer from his opponent. The gambling expert said he'd pass. The protagonist won. In the fourth round, the same thing happened again. The protagonist raised the bet and his opponent passed. In the eighth round, the protagonist made again a bet of 500,000 and won again. In the 15th round, the protagonist kept playing, but he spasmed. In the 21st round, the expert decided to support the game and put a bet of 500,000. Then the protagonist opened the card and said that he had won again. After that, Boss Lee turned to Shen and said that the expert he hired was not that experienced. Shen calmly and good-naturedly said that the protagonist was just lucky. After saying that, Shen gave Boss Lee a sly look. He thought that Lee was chewing and didn't notice how he had fallen into his trap. Shen was patient and waited for the game to develop. He was confident in his expert. Shen thought to himself that he was conducting his own game tactics with his expert. First, they play a couple of games to learn their opponent's moves and way of thinking. Shen noticed that Li Jutai had already lost over 200 million. It was unlikely that he would give up further play. It was time for the 30th round. The croupier ordered the players to make the next bet. Wu Chen said confidently that he was betting a million. He moved the chips. The expert noticed that the protagonist doesn't look at the cards he's dealt. That means he's relying on luck. Out loud, the examiner says he's in favor. Wu Chen confidently said that he was raising the bet by a whole million. The examiner thought the protagonist had a bad hand and he had a pair of kings, so he should win. The expert said out loud that things were going very well for him, so he went all in. Boss Lee thought the protagonist had a better chance, but he hasn't seen the top cards yet, so it's still questionable. Wu Chen held his cards in his hands. He was thinking about how he should play next. After a bit of thought, the protagonist said he'd go all in. The expert adjusted his glasses and said that there were not enough millions on the table. He suggested adding more. Chen asked how many millions to add one or better yet several. At the same time, Boss Lee summoned some girls with chips on their trays. The girls came over and brought large piles of extra chips. After thinking for a bit, Wu Chen said decisively that he was raising the bet by 100 million. The expert carefully analyzed his opponent's behavior. He realized that Wu Chen only put his finger on important cards. The expert thought carefully to himself and realized that the protagonist had an ace. In the end, the expert decided to pass on the game. He told the protagonist that he is very greedy when he bets 50 million and wins 50 million more. Miss Lee looked at the protagonist with attention. She said that his card was an ace. Wu Chen replied to her that she hadn't guessed. He took and turned over his card. The guy revealed his card to everyone around him and said he only had a deuce. The examiner was angry and jumped up from his seat. Wu Chen told the expert that he was simply inattentive and not to blame him for his failure. The expert thought about it. He realized that this loss would help him understand his opponent's next trick. Another 31st round of the card game began. The expert evaluated his cards. At the same time, the main character was sitting and analyzing the cards he was given. The examiner carefully picked up his card and saw that it was a nine of diamonds. The expert thought they both had the same hand. If the protagonist has the nine of spades, there's no way he can beat him. He thought you had a very low probability of getting all four nines in the same game. The expert looked at Wu Chen and noticed that he again didn't look at his card. Mr. Shen was standing next to him. After some thought, the expert realized that it seemed to be the right time. He decided to call it a day. Mr. Shen carefully watched everything that was going on at the table. He realized that the game was ending. The expert told his opponent that the game was great, but it was time to decide the winner. He said he bet two million on the pot. The protagonist agreed. He said he was in favor of the bet. There was a long silence at the table. Everyone was analyzing the current course of the game. Miss Lee asked if a bit of 200 million is not too reckless a decision. Boss Lee told her that the guy had been lucky all along, so they have nothing to worry about. Mr. Shen took a close look at his expert. He noticed that he felt like a fish out of water. After a brief pause, the expert said that he supported the rate. The expert told the protagonist that in gambling the main thing in time to stop, the expert added that if a guy doesn't know how to control his mind, he can't win. The expert said that Wu Chen thinks he is the god of gambling, and yet he doesn't even look at his cards. Then the expert opened his cards. He shouted that 200 million already belonged to him. 
Shen thought it was his unconditional victory. The people around him fell silent. Shen told Boss Li that he has a big family, so finding 200 million won't be a problem for him. Li Jutai looked at Shen irritably. He didn't answer him anything. At that moment, everyone was distracted by the voice of the main character. He asked the people around him if they were finished or not. Wu Chen said they were opening up. He started turning over his cards. The expert was very excited. He realized that the opponent probably had a winning combination. The expert reached forward to look at the card in the protagonist's hands. He noticed that Wu Chen was holding the Nine of Spades. The expert didn't realize it could be such a card. The expert was very surprised. He asked the protagonist when he had time to look at the maps. Wu Chen asked the one who thought he was going to play blind. The protagonist told the expert that his trouble was that he wasn't observant enough. The protagonist said that the expert failed to notice the moment when he was looking at his cards. Wu Chen said the expert is a good player but very arrogant. He was wrong to think that he could figure him out in a few games. The protagonist questioningly told the expert did he really think his emotions were true. Wu Chen told the expert that he didn't even think for a second that he might be deceived. The protagonist controlled the game from the beginning, and the victim in it was an expert hired by Shen. Mr. Shen felt someone put a hand on his shoulder from behind unexpectedly. Boss Li told Shen that the money he had was borrowed. That could get him in big trouble. The expert approached Mr. Shen and wanted to say something to him. He replied that they would talk outside. The protagonist called out to Shen and his game expert. He asked where they were going. Shen told Boss Li that the two of them wanted to leave after such a rout. Li Jutai asked the protagonist what the problem was in the first place. Wu Chen approached him. Wu Chen said he would explain everything later. He asked Li Jutai to give him a knife. Li Jutai held out a folding knife to the protagonist and asked if he knew how to use it. Wu Chen leisurely and professionally revealed the knife. The surrounding people waited. The protagonist asked with interest to the people around him what they thought. Wu Chen took the knife and resolutely walked towards the gambling expert. The protagonist grabbed the expert's arm and cut his sleeve. The expert was very frightened. After that, a playing card fell out of the expert's sleeve. It was the Ace of Spades. Li Jutai was very surprised. He couldn't believe that the expert was cheating in the game. Wu Chen reminded the expert that he had asked for a card recount after the 15th round and then stole the Ace of Spades. He didn't reveal it because the game had to be finished. Did the boss yell menacingly at the expert as he dared to cheat in his presence? Li Jutai turned menacingly to Mr. Shen and demanded that he explain everything. The expert said fearfully that it was all a misunderstanding. The protagonist held his hand. After that, Wu Chen twisted the expert's arm violently so that he collapsed onto the table. The protagonist menacingly shouted to the expert that he should have known the rules, and he put his hand on the table. Wu Chen swung around with the knife in his hand and he prepared to stab the expert's hand with it. The protagonist said menacingly that it was time to get what he deserved. The expert grabbed his badly injured arm and screamed loudly. Wu Chen looked at Mr. Shen menacingly and asked what he was saying. The game expert sat on the floor and held his hand. Shen said as convincingly as possible that he didn't know anything. The expert had done it without his knowledge. Wu Chen returned the knife to Boss Li and said that he was leaving as he needed to rest. The main character told Boss Li not to approach Mr. Shen at the club. Li Jutai remained silent. He realized that he had to do as the protagonist said. The protagonist was walking down the hall with Mrs. Li. She asked him if he enjoyed cutting off people's hands. Wu Chen replied that of course he didn't like it. This answer really surprised the woman. She asked the guy what he had said to her. After a little thought, Wu Chen asked the woman if she cut off her arm, how she would feel. The protagonist left in the corridor and Mrs. Lee silently watched him. Then Mrs. Lee wondered how the boy could be so calm. She could no longer believe that Wu Chen had never killed anyone before. Wu Chen together with Mrs. Lee were riding in the car they were returning home. After a long pause, the woman told the main character that she didn't expect him to play so well. Wu Chen thanked the woman for the compliments, told her to remember to pay him for his services. Mrs. Lee told the guy reproachfully that he was only thinking about money. At this time, Wu Chen noticed something suspicious on the street. He looked out the window. The woman noticed the guy watching the car coming from the side. Mrs. Lee asked with excitement and nervousness at the guy what was wrong. Wu Chen sprawled out in the chair and told the woman that a car had followed them. The driver of the car told Miss Lee that they were about to be followed. The woman ordered the driver to throw off the tail of the pursuers. Mrs. Lee said that they were probably being chased by Ding Jilong. He could have sent his men to follow her. The protagonist thought for a moment. After assessing the situation, he realized that it was definitely not Ding Jilong who was chasing them. Wu Chen looked at the woman with excitement and concern. He realized that the pursuers were not interested in her. The protagonist put his hand on Miss Lee's arm. He wanted to comfort her. Wu Chen told the woman not to worry. He promised to take care of everything. Miss Lee thought of the protagonist as taking this chance to show off. She furtively glanced at the protagonist and thought he was doing pretty well. 
Mrs. Lee interrupted the silence and asked the guy if he was hungry. The woman told Wu Cheng that he would get a pleasant surprise for his services today. Wu Chen and the woman arrived at a large and expensive restaurant. They were sitting together at a table. The guy told the woman that there were a lot of familiar people around and they might perceive him as a competitor. Miss Lee said she wanted as many people as possible to know about the main character. Mr. Han Deli came over to their table. He was the head of the Lanshan Innovation Group. He said hello to Miss Lee and said he didn't expect to see her here. The woman said hello to Mr. Han. She said that her boyfriend went on to spend the evening at a Cantonese restaurant. Mrs. Lee told the protagonist that Mr. Han Deli approached them. Mr. Han told the protagonist that he was young and handsome. He pointed out that Miss Lee has very good taste. Wu Chen thanked Mr. Han. He said it was very kind of him. Mr. Khan apologized to the woman and the protagonist for interrupting their date. Mr. Khan then said that his client had arrived and he would have to leave. After Mr. Han left, Mrs. Lee said that he was a very nice person and liked to make new acquaintances. Wu Chen told the woman that there was no need for any explanation he knew Mr. Han better than she did. Mrs. Lee told the protagonist he was the best businessman around. Wu Chen told the woman that few people would want to get intimate with her. Miss Lee said that she has a lot of competitors and especially women. The woman told the guy that it's very foolish to view her as an enemy. Wu Chen thought for a while and said back to the woman that she was completely right. Then Miss Lee was called by a girl from outside. She asked if she had a young man. Liu Kaishu, also known as Liu Liaozan, came over to them. Liu Kaishu was able to start Yongshu Fashion Corporation with the help of her husband. Liu Kaishu is Li Jobin's main competitor. Liu Kaishu told Miss Li that she was 27 years old and the guy looked only 20. Is she really attracted to young girls? Mrs. Li replied to her that she would regard the girl's word as a joke just for the sake of Lu Laoban. Liu Kaishu asked Mrs. Li whether she cared so much about what others would say. Mrs. Li loudly shouted back for the girl to stop. Miss Li almost threw her coffee glass at her companion. She was stopped by the protagonist. Wu Chen told Mrs. Li to calm down and decided to talk to Liu Kaishu himself. The protagonist told Miss Li that he would completely figure it out on his own. Wu Chen walked up close to Liu Kaishu. He looked at her carefully and tentatively. The protagonist was silent. He studied the girl standing directly across from him. Liu Kaishu couldn't stand it. She asked the guy angrily what he was staring at. Wu Chen replied to her that he just couldn't remember where he had seen her before. Afterward, the main character cheerfully said that he remembered at last. Wu Chen then looked at Liu Kaishu and asked if she had worked at the club before. The girl was very angry when she heard such words from the guy. She banged her hand on the table with all her might. Chai Xu pointed her hand at the guy and said that his whole family works at the nightclub. She asked Wu Chen angrily if he knew who she was. The protagonist looked at the girl and said she couldn't escape her past with Botox and a scalpel. Chai Shui was surprised. She couldn't understand how the protagonist could know her nightclub activities. The girl thought it was 10 years ago and no one was supposed to know about it. Chai Xu told the guy that he's informed and that means he's well connected. Wu Chen replied to the girl that that wasn't all. He still had more interesting information. That's when Lu Guanyan came over. He was the chairman of the Donai Julie Company. He asked excitedly to the Chai Xu girl what exactly happened to her. Chai Shui immediately snapped out of her seat and ran up quickly to Lu Guanyan. A girl complained to Lu Guanyan that she was insulted by the main character. The man promised that he would take care of it. Li Guanyan asked Mrs. Li what kind of person was standing next to her. The woman calmly replied to him that her boyfriend named Wu Chen was standing next to her. Li Guanyan said that he is a respected man in the city, and insulting his wife is like slapping him. The protagonist nonchalantly said there was someone who could resolve the situation. Li Guanyan asked the guy here, thinking that he wanted to touch him because he is protected by Mrs. Li. Wu Chen replied to the man completely calmly that he wasn't talking about her. The protagonist looked at the interlocutor and gave him the name Ma Hui Fang. Li Guanyan was very much surprised. He couldn't understand how the main character knew that name. Mrs. Li noticed the man's transformation after Wu Chen's words. She couldn't understand what had caused this reaction. The protagonist looked at Li Guanyan and suggested that he step back to talk. Li Guanyan looked at the protagonist with anger he could not understand how the guy knew so much about him. Wu Chen told the man that he could tell him some entertaining stories. The main character looked at the man and said that in the first story, the main character is his wife. Ten years ago, at the initiative of her lover, Liu took a job in a nightclub. There she found a rich client. This wealthy client built a demolition business while suffering from infertility. The client knew he was never going to have children. One day he told his girlfriend Liu about it. The girlfriend had her own devious plans after this information. After that, the girl had plastic surgery. She changed her name from Liz Quan to Kai Shu. She was the client's mistress. Three months later, the girl became pregnant and then a boy was born. This baby wasn't the client's. The man could have requested a DNA test. 
That's why the girl gave a lot of money to bribe the doctor. The guy looked at Lu Guangyan and said that it was about him. He added that the child didn't look like a man at all. Wu Chen said that Kai Xiu was planning to cause an accident that would kill Li Guangyan. The girl will get all his money. The man said sharply to the guy did he really think he would believe this absurdity. Wu Chen asked the man if the girl's cousin worked at his company. It's not her brother, it's her lover. The main character then added that Chai Xu and her lover are still together. Wu Chen told the man that the girl met her lover yesterday afternoon on the stairs in the company building, where there are the least number of people. The main character suggested to the man that he ask the girl himself. Unless, of course, she's lying to him. At the same time, Chai Shui was standing next to Mrs. Li. She thought she should put her in her place. Li Guanyin walked over to the girl with a serious look and beckoned her over. The man asked strictly to the girl where she was yesterday with her brother. Chai Xu replied a little nervously that they had spent the whole day in the office. Li Guangyan said that he heard from the guy that the girl and her brother had gone to meet a client and were not in the office. Chai Xue said fearfully that there had been a mistake. The man offered to call her brother and clarify. Then the girl said she remembered that she and her brother had gone out to meet. She asked the man what the questions were all about. Li Guanyin slapped the girl and shouted at her. Does she really think he doesn't know about their affair? After that, Li Guangyin shouted menacingly to the girl to leave. Chai Shui headed for the exit. The man shouted that they would talk later. Li Guanyin turned to Mrs. Li and apologized to her for this scene happening in front of her. The woman told the man not to worry as they wouldn't tell anyone about it. Li Guanyin said sadly that he never imagined that someone would take advantage of his desire to have children so cruelly. The man thought about it. He found it hard to believe that the girl was cheating on him. Li Guanyin realized that he would have to forget about Chai Xu. This brought him relaxation. Li Guanyin told the protagonist that he had accepted his fate and that he would not have children. Wu Chen told the man calmly that the man in reality had a wonderful son. The man was very much surprised. He did not believe the words of the protagonist. Wu Chen reminded Li Guanyin that he still had a few stories in store for the man. The main character told a story about a couple of young people who had been friends since childhood and then fell in love. After that, the guy enriched himself and started cheating on his girlfriend. Then he ran off with the money and the mistresses. He didn't know that her ex-lover was pregnant. The girl decided to keep the child. She raised him herself and put her son on his feet. She said that his father died and the boy was able to build a career and start a family. This boy is now a very happy boy living in peace and tranquility. The main character told Li Guanyan that in reality, a man can have children and he even has a granddaughter. With great interest, the man asked Wu Chen if he knew his son's name. The protagonist replied that the son's name was Ma Ziwei after his mother's name. Li Guanyan asked the guy if his ex-girlfriend got married. Wu Chen replied that the girl was forever disappointed in men after one freak. The main character said that the woman lives in Donghai and even knows that Li Guanyan got rich. At the same time, the woman doesn't even want to hear anything about Li Guanyan because he has brought her a lot of pain. The protagonist fell silent. He reached into his pocket to pull something out. Wu Chen gave the man a piece of paper. He said it had the girl's address on it. Now it's up to the man whether she forgives him or not. Li Guanyin told the guy if he could get the woman to forgive him, he would owe him. Mrs. Li told the man that he was already obligated. The protagonist said that Li Guanyin would be good for them. Late in the evening, a woman drove the protagonist in an automobile to his house. The boy wanted to leave. Mrs. Li called him over to her. She was still in the car. The woman told the protagonist that she had something to tell him. Wu Chen turned around and walked over to the car. He looked at the woman. Abruptly, Mrs. Li grabbed the boy by the scruff of his neck and pulled him to her. Afterward, the woman kissed the guy goodbye. He wasn't expecting that. Mrs. Li told Wu Chung that Ding Zhulong often sends people to watch her, so let him choke on it now. The main character looked at the woman and asked her if it was her first kiss. Mrs. Liu asked strictly to the guy if this was part of their deal. The guy answered her quietly that her kissing technique was so hard that his lips hurt. The guy then turned around and walked leisurely from the car to his house. At this time, on the floor where the guy lived, two girls were furiously discussing something among themselves. A girl turned to her friend named Lily and said that she was hungry and offered her something to eat. Lily told her she had to wait for her boyfriend. The girl didn't like that answer and wanted to say something back to her friend. Lily tells the girl that the guy brainwashed her and she won't let it go. The girl asked Lily if she had told the guy anything. She didn't understand how he knew so much about her. Lily said she didn't say anything at all. She said she needed to kick a guy's ass right now. The girl hesitated. She only wanted to ask the guy and didn't think the girlfriend would react like that. Then from around the corner appeared the main character of the girls noticed him at once. One of the girls yelled out that she had spotted a guy. Lily turned around too. Wu Chen walked over to the girls joyfully and calmly said that he was here. The girl shouted at the guy that he was a cheat. 
Wu Chen replied that if she knew he was a villain, why was she talking to him so rudely? During the conversation, the guy slipped his hand into his pocket. The girls became suspicious. Lily pulled out a stun gun and pointed it at the main character she told him to stay away from the girl. The main character walked past the girls and said he would just open the door. In response, Lily asked the guy very angrily if he was ignoring her. Lily yelled at the guy to go to hell and wanted to taser him. The guy yelled at her to stop. Wu Chen told Lily calmly that Hu Xiaowei was cheating on her. She was very surprised at such words. The main character said that Hu Xiaowei had returned to Donghai a couple days ago. He went to see his mistress and then went out with his friends. He ran out of money so he went back to Lily's place. Lily was very surprised and upset. She asked the boy if it was true what he had told her. Wu Chen replied to the girl that if she didn't believe it, she could call her acquaintance. Lily said she doesn't believe the protagonist. She'll call her friend to make sure Wu Chen is lying to her. Lily called her friend and asked where he was. He said he was at home. She told him that there was 10,000 in the dresser drawer in the bathroom. The guy hesitated and said he would call her back in half an hour. Lily realized that her friend really wasn't home. She shouted that he wasn't going to live and ran with all her might. Her friend wanted to run after her. When Lily ran away, the main character hugged the girl and pulled her against him. Wu Chen held the girl in his arms and asked if she wanted to talk. The girl frightenedly asked the protagonist why he grabbed her. The guy told her that the princess must be tired. The girl said she could walk on her own and that he should let her go. Wu Chen didn't listen to her and carried her in his arms. She struggled and demanded that he let her go. The next morning, the main character woke up. He sat on the bed and came to his senses. Wu Chen started to get dressed. He had to get going. The girl lay silently on the bed. The protagonist was already putting on his shoes and asked the girl if she was still asleep. The girl frightenedly replied to the guy that she couldn't sleep because of him. Wu Chen threw a piece of crumpled paper at the girl. She was surprised by it. The main character told her it was his phone number. If she wants to see him, she can call him. The girl got excited. She told the guy that there was no difference. The main character was walking leisurely down the street. At that time, someone was following him from a car. Wu Chen calmly walked onward. He took out his phone and decided to call someone. The protagonist called his stalker and told him that he would be at the training and that he should wait for him there. The main character has been practicing martial arts for centuries. He's still not good enough. Wu Chen even managed to mess with Ding Zhuilong. He can't even imagine how much trouble it will cause him later. The protagonist was resting after a training session. He noticed Ding Zhuilong walking behind him. Wu Chen turned around and calmly noticed that his dangerous enemy was already here. Wang Jiangwan used to have a second rank. After he made connections with Li Tai, they were able to expand their influence. Within a couple of years, Wang Jiangguan was able to become one of the four bosses. They control 90% of Western China's entertainment. Dean told the protagonist that he misunderstood him. He sent a man to keep him safe. Wu Chen replied to Ding that he wasn't sure if Li Jutai had ordered him to do it. The main character reminded that Li Jutai is very worried about his sister. Ding Zhuilong thought hard. He pondered over what he had heard from the guy. Wu Chen told Dean to calm down if he wanted to turn him in. He would call Boss Li. After a brief pause, Dean asked the protagonist what he would like. Wu Chen told Dean he wanted to be friends with him. He has a lot of subordinates he could use. Dean replied to the protagonist that he could always call on him if he needed his services. The protagonist thought to himself that he knew a lot. But with the help of people, it would be much easier. At that time, the guy's cell phone rang. He immediately picked up the receiver. He heard on the phone that something was wrong. And he needed to come right away. He said he was on his way. Dean suggested to the protagonist that he take his car with a change of clothes inside. He added that the car would be an apology. Wu Chen replied cheerfully to Dean that he didn't mind in any way at all. At this time in Mrs. Li's office, work life was busy. Mrs. Li's secretary and female employees were busy with business. They were making many different calls. Mrs. Li received a call where she heard that the girl would not be able to be at the conference as she was not feeling well. Wu Chen entered Mrs. Li's office. He asked her what was wrong. The woman said that the face of their company, singer Den Shunya, had been in an accident. Wu Chen said that yesterday, he helped the woman find the traitor, and today Deng Shunya can go to the conference. The protagonist confidently said that none of this is an ordinary coincidence. Miss Li said that Ding Zhuilong thinks he can change the terms of the deal and use his family's connections. The guy asked the woman if she needed to find her a new representative for the conference. Mrs. Li asked in a tired voice to the guy where he wanted to find a new representative, Wu Chen said he knows an actress with tons of awards and millions of followers. Miss Li said that a star of such a level as Tao Manyun did not agree to even be talked to, let alone be a spokesperson. The woman told the guy that she knew he wanted to help her but didn't need to be so overzealous. Wu Chen said confidently to the woman that if she didn't believe him, then let them make a deal with her. 
The protagonist promised the woman that Tao would be in her office tomorrow to sign the contract. Tao Minyun is a top-notch actress from China who has gone global. After winning awards, she became the most sought-after and highest-paid Chinese actress. Miss Lee told the guy she didn't believe Tao Minyun would sign a contract with her. This actress is so popular that she can even refuse foreigners. Wu Chen once again suggested that the woman make a deal with him. Mrs. Lee eventually agreed. The protagonist said he would force the actress to come to Miss Lee's office and sign a contract. If he didn't, he would forfeit his salary and pay the woman $20 million. If Wu Chen wins, Mrs. Lee will in turn pay him $20 million. The main character told the woman not to be jealous either. She told him that she had no feelings for him and that they were just pretending to be a couple. Mrs. Lee looked at Wu Chen and told him that he could find whoever he wanted for himself for all she cared. The protagonist told her back that they had a deal and he agreed. Wu Chen told the woman to put 20 million into his account so he could do everything. Mrs. Lee was very angry with the guy. She wanted to say something to him but he had already left. Wu Chen realized at once that he would need help he decided to call. The main character dialed Dean's cell phone and told him he had a favor to ask of him. Dean and the protagonist arrived at the computer club. One of the players told the protagonist that everyone was ready. Dean told Wu Cheng that his guys are good at computer games, but why would he need them? The protagonist told players to turn on their computers and play the game Lord of the Legendary City. He added that everyone must register. At 5 o'clock, everyone must enter the arena and write King Hegemon at the beginning of the nickname. After everyone goes in, they will have to wait for the protagonist in the square. Wu Chen at this time replenished the computer game account very well. The main character needed to throw money to build a clan in the game. After four hours, one of the players got to the point where he asked for someone to throw the final punch and finish it off. The fierce battle continued. The players gave their best at the club. One of the gamers said it was his first time playing an account with a thousand crypto. At the same moment, he struck a demon in the game. A message appeared that the King Hegemon squad was able to pass the Orc Plague Draft. The player was able to get additional items and skills within the game. He said it was the best map. Wu Chen activated and went inside the game. He saw the other participants there. The protagonist noticed Dean coming up behind him. He was inside the game too. Dean tells the protagonist that their king and demon have managed to beat the first team of the dragon server that enslaved the world. They'll need another 8 million for gear and equipment. Wu Chen said that there are no more regular players on the server. Only they dragons are left. The protagonist said it was time to start the second phase in the game. A message appeared in the game that the boss of the Hegemon King clan had started a city battle. Wu Chen shouted to the other players to go to the town square and beat up the dragons. They reached the main square inside the game. There was a fierce battle going on. Players fought and helped each other with advice during heavy combat. The main character told them all to go to Chiku Square as there are many dragons there. One of the players approached the protagonist and said that he couldn't believe he had invested so much money in the game. The protagonist was approached by the leader of the Celestial Order named Oregon Tyrant of his level was. He told the protagonist that their guilds were equal in strength. It's still unclear who will win. Wu Chen looked at Oregon and said that the winner would be decided soon. Oregon looked at Wu Chen and asked him with interest as he planned to win. The protagonist calmly replied to Oregon that they would win he was surprised. Wu Chen shouted to all the participants of the game to listen to his order. The protagonist shouted to the players to all take off their equipment. They complied. Then he ordered them all to leave the game, so they did. Oregon was very surprised. He asked the protagonist what he was doing. Oregon said sadly to Wu Chung not to leave as it wouldn't be fair. Afterward, Oregon told the kid that they wouldn't have opponents like that anymore. After that, Oregon said he had 10 million in here. Chen had 8 or 9. He added that if the protagonist gave up, he couldn't become the boss. The guy was silent in response. Wu Chen replied to the player that there was a big problem in his woman's company. The representative of the company has crashed her car and they need to look for a new one and for this reason he needs to come back and help. Oregon realized he could help the guy. He asked exactly which actresses were needed and he could find a couple. After thinking for a bit, Oregon said that even if Tao Manyun was needed, he could make one call and everything would be solved. The protagonist was very happy. He realized that his complicated and expensive plan had worked. Wu Chen told Oregon that he had business in East China, so he would pass. Oregon asked if he was from the East too. The protagonist said he was leaving. In an instant, Wu Chen disappeared from the game. Oregon wanted to stop him, but he couldn't. There is a message in the game for all to see that Tyrant Chen has left the game. The protagonist took off his gaming headset and stepped away from the computer. The guy got a message on his smartphone where someone texted him that he paid 10 million and asked the server owner for his number. 6. The protagonist thought to himself that he had planned everything from the beginning. A guy got a message from a user that his woman was in a hurry but if he had a plan, he was willing to listen. 
Wu Chen read the message and told the players around that they were doing well and could go. Then the protagonist received a message that he would be expected in Zongchen County in Qingguan. After that, the protagonist made his way towards the mansion. He met Lei's boss there. The protagonist saw in front of him Lei Chen, who was the second son of the Lei family and was 42 years old. The protagonist calmly and casually told the interlocutor that his name was Wu Chen. Lei asked the guy if he knew him. Wu Chen said Lei's family owns the Hong Fei industry. Lei Chen's reputation is like a storm. Lei poured himself some green tea and told the guy what he might know about his reputation. Lei Chen asked the protagonist with suspicious interest what family he was from. Wu Chen asked Lei Chen why Lei Chen was so wary. Is he afraid that his brother will kill him? Hong Fei is in the national top 10 industry. Their annual turnover exceeds 60 billion. Lei Cheng Hu is a 70-year-old man who is in the share. The real owner is Lei Yu. Any family that wanted to contact Lei Chen would be considered a traitor to Lei Yu. At the same time, Lei Yu always wanted to take Lei Chen's life into his own hands. Lei Chen sat silently and thoughtfully. He couldn't understand where the main character came from. After a long pause, Lei Chen looked at Wu Chen and asked once more strictly what family he was from. The protagonist told Boss Lei not to panic, he doesn't belong to any family. Their meeting is completely random. Lei Chen thought to himself that he would find out about the guy. Lei Yu could have sent the protagonist to him. Lei Chen more good-naturedly told the guy to tell him his problem. Wu Chen was able to donate a large amount of money to the game, but could not find a representative for his woman. The main character said that someone set this up on purpose. He didn't expect their representative to get hit by a car. Lei Chen asked with interest to the guy did he really donate to the game to blow off steam. After that, Lei Chen promised that he would find a representative for the boy. He asked what kind of company Wu Chen had. He replied that it was a cosmetics company called Symphony of Fashion. Lei Chen asked the guy if he was Lee's woman. He told the protagonist that he could have said he was from the Lee family right away. Wu Chen said he didn't want to be called part of their family. Mrs. Lee has a bad relationship with her family in general. The protagonist called Mrs. Lee. He wanted to tell her about the money. Mistress Lee was taking a bath at the time. She asked the protagonist if he had taken her 10 million to play. Wu Chen told the woman that the game had raised the stakes and the one who would lose would beg on his knees and beg for forgiveness. Lei Chen asked the protagonist what he was talking to the woman about. He thought to himself how the protagonist could bring Mrs. Jobin to her knees. Wu Chen said it's nothing important he made a bet with his woman and she's overreacting. Lei Chen offered the protagonist a drink of tea he clarified what kind of bet they had made. The protagonist said that the woman was being wronged and he wanted to help her. He asked Lei Chen if he knew Ding Jui Long. Lei Chen replied that he knew Dean. He asked if it was Joy Long who was causing trouble for the protagonist. He replied that Mrs. Lee was afraid that he would be Dean's next target. The protagonist jumped up and said that he wasn't a coward and wouldn't sit out while Joy Long tried to ruin Mrs. Jobin's life. Such words from the guy had a great effect on Lei Chen. He jumped up and slapped his hand on the table. Lei Chen shouted out to the main character that he was absolutely right and he understood him. Wu Chen revealed that he had made a bet with Mrs. Lee she would give him company opportunities. The condition is that the press conference is successful. If it's good, Wu Chen wins. If it goes badly, Miss Lee wins. Wu Chen said sadly that if he lost the bet, he would become Mrs. Lee's obedient puppy. Lei Chen was very happy to hear the whole story. He promised the protagonist to find a representative. The protagonist was pleased. Lei Chen added that he would help find a representative right away. At home at the actress's house, the phone rang. She was just getting out of the shower. The actress picked up the phone and realized it was her father calling her. She was very happy. Actress Lei Chen's father told her to take a vacation and come back. She has a contract with a cosmetics firm. He promised to cover her losses. Wu Chen was very happy that everything had been successfully completed. Lei Chen showed him the phone and said that everything was ready. The main character thought it went so smoothly he didn't even expect it. Wu Chen thought of telling Lei Chen what his brother was afraid of. He wanted to help Lei as he had helped him without hesitation. The main character told Lei that they look more alike than he thinks. He asked Wu Chen to just call him Brother Chen. Lei Chen asked the protagonist if he thought fate had brought them together. Wu Chen told Lei Chen to read the message on his phone. The protagonist added to find the owner of this car. It would help Lei Chen Yu deal with the accident from 10 years ago. Lei Chen understood what the protagonist was talking about. He was angry when he remembered the accident from a long time ago. The protagonist turned to Lei Chen and told him to hurry up as Sen Sheng Jun would be going overseas very soon. Boss Lei thought they had warned the people but they would still have to hurry. On a tragic night 10 years ago, a truck intentionally drove into their car at an intersection. Lei reacted very quickly but it was no use and the car went off the road. The car with Lei Chen flew down a large cliff at high speed. 
Immediately afterward, the car carrying Lei Chen and his wife was engulfed in flames. The boss survived, but his wife was badly injured and died in front of him. Lei Chen was at the hospital during the investigation. His agent got some information. The driver of the truck was Sen Sheng Jun, who worked with Lei Yu. After the car accident, Sen Sheng Jun simply disappeared. Boss Lei took this as proof of his guilt. Lei Chen continued to lead a debauched life with lots of drinking and girls. Lei Chen was also very active in computer games. He spent a lot of time and money on them. Boss Lei has been playing the foolish, naive, and rich son for ten years waiting for the Day of Reckoning. At that time, one of Boss Lei's underlings said that the identity was established and so was the address. Lei Chen told the protagonist that he would go first. If Wu Chang needs anything, he'll always be there. The protagonist thought to himself that in two days, two brothers Liu Guanian and Lei Chen at once. The guy decided to himself that the case was over. He decided to call Mrs. Li. Wu Chen heard the answer on the phone that the caller had put him on hold. He was surprised that the woman had put him on hold. The protagonist heard on the phone from a woman that she was in a meeting. He asked if there was a meeting in the morning. The main character was driving a car and it stopped near a traffic light. Wu Chen stood on the road surrounded by beautiful and expensive cars. The protagonist took a closer look and saw a whole fleet of cool cars around him. Looking to the side, the guy saw a girl in Su Ching Ying's car. She was one of the most beautiful women in East China. Wu Chen recalled that this girl impressed him the most she had a great contrast in appearance and character. The protagonist decided to himself that if he had already met this girl, he could flirt. Wu Chen waved Su Ching's hand sitting behind the wheel in a very joyful and friendly manner. The girl noticed him but didn't want to talk. She lifted the window of her car. Wu Chen wrote a messenger message to the girl saying that she was even more beautiful in person than on TV. The protagonist wrote a message to the girl that he expected a response from her. Wu Chen think to yourself that when Ching Ying sees her secret code in his messages, she will definitely invite him for a conversation. The protagonist's smartphone beeped that it had come back. Instead of the girl, it was Li Jutai who texted him. He asked for Wu Chen to come urgently. The protagonist came to meet Li Jutai. Li's boss told the guy that he was giving him a three-story house with a garden. Boss Li tells Wu Cheng that he can't live with his pregnant sister in a small house. This mansion is his wedding present. The protagonist was surprised by such words he didn't even know what to say. The next morning on the 10th of July, the girl went to a meeting at the company run by Mrs. Li. She went to the gate and said she had an appointment. The receptionist at the gate asked the girl how to address her. She said her name was Tao. The receptionist said there's no record. Director Li is in a meeting right now. She asked Tao's girlfriend to wait. In the meeting room, Mrs. Lee said sternly to her subordinates that the conference was in 13 days and they hadn't found anyone yet. The woman shouted to her subordinates that they had already been given several bonus increases but no results. Miss Lee's phone kept ringing. She couldn't answer it. The woman heard Tao coming to see her. She said to let her into her office immediately. Mrs. Lee greeted Tao. Tao replied that Mrs. Lee looked beautiful and her husband Wu Chen was a very nice man. Mrs. Lee requested that the Tao girl sit down and asked how she met her husband. Tao said she doesn't know the main character personally. Her godfather Lei Chung is a good friend of Wu Chung. He asked his father for a favor. Mrs. Lee was very surprised that the protagonist knew Tao's godfather named Lei Chung. The woman ordered her subordinate to bring the contract. After signing the contract, Mrs. Lee shook Tao's hand. They said goodbye. Soon the protagonist arrived at Miss Lee's office. He told the woman that the contract was signed and reminded her to fulfill her part of the bet. The woman asked the guy with interest how he knew Lei Chen personally. Wu Chen said that this question is too specific. A magician doesn't reveal his tricks. The protagonist told the woman not to change the subject. It was time for her to apologize. The woman realized she would have to apologize and took off her jacket. Whether mistress would have to kneel. She took off her shoes for that purpose. The woman started apologizing to the guy. She gave her full name first. Miss Lee knelt on the carpet and spoke words of apology to the guy. The woman said on her knees that she was sorry and apologized. The protagonist was surprised that the woman apologized and kneeled in front of him. Wu Chen extended his hand to Mrs. Lee and told her to get up already. Miss Lee's phone rang. The person on the phone told her that someone was digging up the protagonist. The woman asked who it could be. The interlocutor replied to the woman that Wu Chen is looking for Golden Service Group and the Su family. Mrs. Lee asked the protagonist why the Su family was digging up on him. Wu Chen told her that it was none of her business, and to stay out of it. A woman tells a guy he's playing all mysterious to get her attention. I can't believe he fell in love with her. The protagonist replies that she's not the most beautiful or wealthy woman he's ever met. There's no reason for him to fall in love with her. Mrs. Lee called the guy a Don Juan. She couldn't believe that he had more beautiful and rich women than her. 
Wu Chen said that he had many women who were prettier and richer than Mrs. Li. The woman asked him to tell her who, for example, it could be. The protagonist replied to the woman that if she wanted to find out his background in this way, she would not succeed. Mrs. Li told the guy he didn't have to blab it to everyone. The main character noticed a call coming to his smartphone. He said it had started. The guy got a call from Su Ching Ying's girlfriend. She said they had to meet and asked him when he had free time. Wu Chen asked if they had to meet. Su Ching told the guy that some things need to be discussed in person. She added that she had booked a private room at the club for 9 o'clock in the morning. Wu Chen agreed. Miss Li asked the guy if Su Ching Ying was his girlfriend. Wu Chen replied to the woman that Su Ching Ying is not his girlfriend yet, but maybe in a couple of days things will change. Miss Li thought that she was not familiar with Su Ching, but had heard a few rumors about this girl. Su Ching's father is a businessman. He married late and so he was already old at the time of the girl's birth. She was raised in strictness and discipline. Even when the girl was studying abroad, she was followed by security to make sure she didn't make any romantic liaisons. When the old man fell ill, he was worried about his daughter's future and wanted to find a suitable groom. The groom would join Sue's family after the engagement. Old man Sue had set strict conditions for the groom. He would not tolerate a breach of the conditions. Mrs. Lee told the guy that he wouldn't succeed with Su Ching. He offered her another bet. The woman accepted. Wu Chen asked Mrs. Lee if she was afraid of losing again. She said she wanted to make a bet. The protagonist said that Su Ching would become his girlfriend in three days. Mrs. Lee replied that she could give him 30 days. If the guy loses, he will kneel down this time. Wu Chen asked the woman what she would do if she lost. At that time, he hugged her. Mrs. Lee asked the boy with interest what he wanted. He wanted to think for a while. The woman said it doesn't matter. If she loses, she still has to do everything. The guy told her they had a deal. The next day, July 11th, the protagonist arrived at the Tang Sha Private Club on the outskirts of Dunhai. At the entrance, he said he had a meeting with Mrs. Su. The receptionist asked the guy if his name was Mr. W. The protagonist confirmed it. The administrator told Wu Chung to follow him. Mrs. Su was expecting them. The protagonist, along with the receptionist, drove an electric car onto a golf course. Su Ching was playing golf at the time. The guy told her she hit a great shot. At this time, Su Ching turned around and saw the protagonist. She asked him how he knew. Wu Chen told her it wasn't very important. The two of them were alone on the golf course. The girl demanded that the guy name a price. Wu Chen told her he didn't come here for that. Su Ching told the protagonist that if he didn't take the money, he would lose her trust. The guy told her that her guards could have grabbed him to kill him and dug him under a bush somewhere. Su Ching told him that she was not Li Jlobin and did not do such a thing. The main character looked closely at the girl and said that she needed to be convinced somehow. Wu Chen walked up behind the girl and hugged her. She was surprised by this. Su Ching asked the guy what he was doing and told him to let her go. The guy standing behind her was helping the girl hold the club. He told her he was going to show her a couple tricks. Wu Chen told the girl that she now had proof so she didn't need to hold back. Shi Ching thought the main character was Miss Li's boyfriend. There's no way she would believe a story about learning to golf. The girl thought to herself that she had nothing to fear, unlike the guy. The guards watched Wu Chen and the girls embrace carefully. They couldn't tell if the protagonist was threatening Su Ching. The girl asked the guy if he was afraid that she would call now Li Ben. The guy said he was scared, but the girl should be scared too. He might reveal her little secrets. Si Ching looked at the guy with interest and asked if he had given her the blackmail handle. The main character tapped the girl on the ass with his hand and told her to keep playing and focus. Xi Ching was very surprised by this. She didn't even know what to say to the guy. The guards were watching. One of them decided to call Mistress right away. The guard was watching the guy and girl and telling Mistress on the phone all the details. Wu Chen gave recommendations to Xi Ching on how to strike her properly. The main character tapped the girl again with his hand on her butt and said that she was hitting the club wrong because she was sticking her butt out. The girl swung around and hit with all her might. She asked the guy if she was doing the right thing. Wu Chen told the girl that she was a good student, but he would not teach her the other techniques. The girl asked why. The main character told the girl that maybe her mom had already called the police here to have him arrested. Su Ching's mother listened carefully to the message from the guards. She told them to hold out for Wu Chen since she was on her way. One of the guards listened to the directive from the supervisor and said he understood it. Shi Ching told the frightened guy that her mother would be here soon and what they should do. Wu Chen suggested she run away with him. The girl was scared and upset she couldn't imagine how she could run away with the guy now. Wu Chen looked romantically at the girl and asked if she really wanted to live her whole life like this. At the same moment, the guy grabbed Xi Ching's hand he wanted to take her with him. The protagonist yelled to the girl not to think about anything and just run. The boy and the girl ran toward the red race car. The guards noticed and ran after them. 
The guards couldn't catch up with the car and decided to report it to their boss. The guard called and told the mistress that the young lady had run off with the boy. The warden was furious. At this time, Wu Chen together with Xi Qing were chasing in a racing car at high speed. Wu Chen was driving. He asked the girl if she was scared. Su Qing told him that she wasn't scared at all. At that time, the girl noticed that someone was calling her phone. It was her mother. The protagonist told the girl to let her be on her own for one day. Su Qing hesitated for a moment. She had to get out of this situation somehow. She picked up the phone and her mother asked the girl where she was and who she was with. She said she was with a friend. The mother asked the girl strictly how they met and how she knew who her friend was. The mother yelled to her daughter to go home immediately. At that time, the guy pressed a button on the car's control panel. Su Qing looked at the protagonist and said that she chose to be herself. Su Qing shouted to her mom on the phone that she was a living person and not her puppy. The car was going full throttle. The mother told her daughter to repeat what she said. The protagonist told the girl that her mother would use all the power of the Su family to find them. Su Qing replied that her mother was protecting her reputation and wouldn't make a fuss. The guy asked if she wanted to go with him. The girl said that she was never considered a human being by her family. She lived someone else's life. Her mother forced her to live her life as she pleased. Su Qing nervously grabbed her clothes and said that everything was really bugging her. The girl told the guy that running away with him was her only chance. Wu Chen replied that her choice would be the right one. Su Qing, without looking at the main character, asked if he was Li Jobin's boyfriend. The girl asked the guy if he was afraid that Mrs. Li would find out about their relationship. The protagonist was silent. He didn't know what to say to the girl now. At this moment, Su Qing grabbed and kissed the protagonist. He didn't expect it. The car stopped abruptly in the middle of the road. There was a silent pause. Wu Chen asked the girl if she kisses him, then why bite him? Su Qing told the guy fearfully that she just felt like it. Wu Chen told her to sit still. The girl obediently and fearfully replied to the guy that she understood him. The protagonist remembered to himself that he was already familiar with the entertaining fetish Su Qing. He remembered that one Groundhog Day he was able to pick her up. She was the prettiest girl on the East Coast. Su Qing even once showed the guy in the laptop her forum account. The protagonist read the message that the girl wrote and what other users were replying to her. It was then that Wu Chen realized that Su Qing was a shining picture in a pretty wrapper with chains that pulled her to the bottom. The protagonist had all the evidence, including written proof that the girl was a latent passive. Wu Chen never thought that he would one day use this knowledge in such a way. He told Su Qing to get in and buckle up. The girl asked where they were going. The main character told her they would go wherever she wanted to go. He offered to go to his place. Four hours later, the protagonist along with the girl arrived at his house to his high house. Wu Chen, together with Su Qing, slept on his bed at this time the phone rang. The protagonist asked on the phone if they had passed. The interlocutor replied that the lady had contacted him, and the first thing she asked him was who was driving. The protagonist replied that he was looking into it and asked the interlocutor to wait. The protagonist noticed that Mrs. Lee Jobin was calling him now, and he wasn't expecting a call from her. Mrs. Lee said she got a call from Ty. She asked the guy how he got on with Su's family. The protagonist told Mrs. Li to wait for a while. Wu Chen asked Su Qing to say something on the phone. Su Qing heard Mrs. Li on the phone asking Darling who he was there with and if he was okay. The girl picked up the phone, said hello to Mrs. Li and told her her name. Miss Li asked Su Qing what her relationship with the protagonist was. She replied that they were just friends and talked about work. Miss Li thought that the girl had definitely said something different before. She told Su Qing to give the phone to Wu Cheng. The woman asked the guy where he was. Wu Chen told her that he was in the house that Boss Li had given him. After a little thought, Mrs. Li told the guy to wait for her since she would be here soon. Su Qing asked the guy if he was afraid of Mrs. Li knowing about their relationship. Wu Chen replied that he was not really Miss Li's boyfriend. The girl told the main character that he was Miss Li's fake boyfriend like the previous ones. Wu Chen told the girl that even her younger brother doesn't know about this, and to keep her quiet, he doesn't want any trouble. Su Qing understood why the guy acted so fearless and came to her. He's not afraid of Miss Li. The protagonist hugged the girl and asked her carefully if she was sorry. Su Qing looked at the protagonist and replied to him that she had no regrets at all. At this time, Mrs. Li was speeding towards the protagonist's house. She couldn't understand why Wu Chen was with Su Qing. She thought Su Qing wasn't that kind of girl. The woman recalled that the actress Tao signed a contract with her thanks to Wu Cheng. Miss Li thought the main character was like some kind of deity. Forty minutes later, Miss Li knocked on the main character's door. He let her in. The woman immediately rushed sharply into the apartment. She searched all over the room, Su Qing. Mistress Li looked around and asked strictly at Wu Chenya where the girl was. The protagonist replied calmly to the woman that the girl is right there. 
The boy went into the kitchen with the woman. Su Ching said that Mrs. Lee was already here. The girl looked at Miss Lee with a friendly and kind gaze and greeted her. The woman also greeted the girl in return. She wondered to herself if Su Ching was cooking food for the protagonist. The girl told the guy to start eating. Dinner will be here soon. Mrs. Lee sternly asked the protagonist what was going on here. Wu Chen calmly told her that Su Ching was his woman. The woman asked the protagonist with interest when Su Ching became his girlfriend. He replied that it was today. The woman asked the protagonist if he knew Su Ching before today and he said no. Mrs. Lee asked in wonder at the guy how on earth he was able to meet the girl. At this time, Su Ching said cheerfully to the protagonist that dinner was almost ready. Su Ching told Wu Cheng to look after the pot herself. She wanted to go to the bathroom. The girl told Mrs. Lee not to stand and move, she would set the table soon. Mrs. Lee was very surprised by everything that was happening. She couldn't believe that the boy had managed to get his hands on Su Ching. The woman grabbed the protagonist's arm and told him to come over to her. The girl told Wu Cheng that the laundry was done. She asked if the clothes should be hung on the balcony. Mrs. Lee thought for a moment. She realized that a young girl could come between her and Wu Cheng. The woman realistically imagined Su Ching doing laundry. The woman imagined that the girl would be able to cook always good food for the guy. Su Ching can be a good housewife for the protagonist and do his laundry. Mrs. Lee felt discouraged. She could have lost Wu Chen. The protagonist along with the girl and Mrs. Lee were sitting at the table. Su Ching wished Mrs. Lee a pleasant appetite. Su Ching told the guy to try a delicious dish. The woman noticed that the girl wanted to feed Wu Chen with chopsticks. The guy tasted it and said it was delicious. He offered the woman a taste. Miss Lee realized that the girl was trying to play this game. She decided to attack. She asked Su Ching aloud if she and her boyfriend had been together for a long time. Su Ching replied that they had recently fallen head over heels in love. She knew at first sight that Wu Chen was her destiny. Su Ching asked the woman if it was true that she and the main character were not a real couple. Mrs. Lee was surprised by such a question. She glared angrily at the protagonist. Su Ching told the woman not to worry, she would not tell anyone. Wu Chen asked the woman why she was looking at him let her eat better. Su Ching suggested that the guy eat more shrimp. Su Ching sat in the main character's arms and thought their feelings were real. Madame Lee watched carefully. She realized that this was a ridiculous provocation. After waiting for a while, Mrs. Lee decided to take the shrimp to taste it. The woman carefully began to slowly strip the shrimp in her hands. Mrs. Lee handed the main character a shrimp and told him to eat it. Wu Chen decided to try the shrimp. Su Ching was very surprised and worried. The protagonist accepted the shrimp from Miss Lee's hands. He liked the food. After that, the three of them continued to eat their dinner in silence at the table. Wu Chen said after dinner that it was delicious and he was full. Su Ching said cheerfully that she would clean up the table. She told the protagonist not to leave the woman alone. The girl retired to the kitchen followed with great attention by Mrs. Lee. The woman asked the guy sternly and sharply about something he was doing. Wu Chen was silent in response. Mrs. Lee grabbed the guy's hand and told him to come over to her. The woman held the boy's hand tightly. She dragged him behind her into the other room. Mrs. Lee held the boy in her arms. She didn't want to let him go. The boy grabbed the woman's hand. Mrs. Lee told him to speak up. The woman looked at the guy with great impatience but didn't understand why he was silent. Mrs. Lee told the guy to be cool. He told her that she should be able to lose. The main character looked calmly at the woman. He told her it was time to pay the bills. Mrs. Lee was very indignant at such words. She didn't even know what to say. Wu Chen told Mrs. Lee that he had been on his feet all day today. He asked her to give him a massage. The woman asked him if she wanted a massage here or in the room. The guy replied that it would be better in the room. Ten minutes later, Su Ching entered the hall and there was no one there. She asked loudly where her dear boyfriend was. Suddenly the girl was distracted. She heard some noise from the next room. The girl stood up and slowly walked toward the room. The door to it was open. Su Ching looked into the room and saw the protagonist lying on the bed. Mrs. Lee was giving him a massage. The girl was very surprised but couldn't believe that Li Jobin could give Wu Cheng a massage. Su Ching thought how could it be that a woman like Miss Li could even serve a man. The girl thought to herself that Li Jobin didn't even notice she was here at all. Su Ching realized that she and the woman are real enemies. Miss Li likes the protagonist to be subordinate to her. The girl realized that it was time to act. She scrambled out of her seat and ran to the bed. Su Ching ran up to the main character. The guy and Mrs. Li looked at her with surprise. Su Ching told the woman to give the guy a massage together now. Mrs. Li was surprised. She couldn't understand how Su Ching, instead of throwing a tantrum, offered to give a massage together. The woman wondered if Su Ching was insane or if she was just putting on a show. Mrs. Lee couldn't understand what the protagonist had done to the young girl. Su Ching told Miss Lee to continue. The main character told the girl to stop and take it easy. He also reminded her about her medication. Su Ching smilingly agreed with the guy. 
She said she would run downstairs to get some medicine. Mrs. Lee looked at the girl and thought that she was really sick in the head. When the girl ran away, Mrs. Lee looked sternly at the guy and told him to explain everything to her. The protagonist told the woman that she owed him a billion dollars. Miss Lee said she didn't believe that Su Ching could fall in love with the protagonist at first sight. She reminded him that Su's family is digging up Wu Chen. The guy replied that they're not digging up on him. It's just that the girl ran away with him and they're looking for her. The woman asked if the guy was planning to marry a girl and join Su's family. He asked Mrs. Lee if she thought he was like that. The woman told the boy that Su Ching would not let him go so easily. Wu Chen replied to her cheerfully that he had no reason to lose such precious connections. The woman asked Wu Chen if he would leave it like that. She reminded him that he was her boyfriend. Mrs. Lee told him that she was the only option for him to get out of this situation. The protagonist assured the woman that they could handle the situation. A woman asked the guy why Su Ching ran away. The guy told her that the girl had lived like a puppy for 20 years. Now she wants to live for herself. At that moment, the protagonist received a call from Su Ching. She said that her family had arrived. Wu Chen replied that he would come down and they would settle everything. After the conversation, the guy disconnected his phone. He realized it was time to act. The protagonist told the woman that the Su family had arrived. Mrs. Lee asked if he had called her specially today. After a little thought, the woman said sadly that she didn't like it. The guy asked the woman what she didn't like. Mrs. Lee replied that she didn't like the manipulation of the protagonist. He replied that the woman and the Sue family were here by accident. Miss Lee responded to the guy that she absolutely does not blame, and she simply does not like the feeling. Wu Chen told the woman that she sounded like a hurt child. He suggested she join their forces. She agreed and afterward the guy and the woman shook hands together. The protagonist and Miss Lee went outside and there were many guards around. They recognized him. The guards demanded that the guy give them back Su Ching's girlfriend. Mrs. Lee turned sternly to the people who had passed and asked if they had come to her for problems. One guard said that in reality, they are looking for Wu Chen who kidnapped their mistress. The woman asked the people who came in if they were really claiming that her boyfriend might have stolen some woman. One of the guards hesitated. He didn't know what to say to Miss Lee. Su Ching came running out of the side. She asked the guards who told them she was stolen. They explained that her mother had asked them. Su Ching shouted to the guards who had come in not to use her mother's name as an excuse. At this time, the car door opened and the girl S mother came out and told Su Ching not to make a fool of herself. Mrs. Lee said hello to Mrs. Su and said that she looked beautiful. After that, Mrs. Su also respectfully said hello back to Mrs. Lee. The woman shook the guy's hand with a serious expression, saying that he had an impressive look and that Mrs. Lee had good taste. With a calm gaze, the girl looked at the woman. She turned to her and mouthed that Miss Su was too kind. Mrs. Su was standing in front of the young people. She suggested going to a quiet place. She agreed, and the girl wanted to discuss everything in person. You can see the wariness in the woman's eyes. She turned her head in someone's direction. The girl behind the smiling guy flinched and looked at her questioningly. Sue was beside that girl. Her gaze lowered. Madam asked Lee what she was doing in her daughter's company. Concerned, she asked her opinion that taking her daughter away with Mr. W's help was reckless, and she would not say anything without a lawyer. With a level gaze, Lee noted, she needed to meet with her daughter and without Mr. W's help, it wouldn't work out. The daughter was hiding something. Her mother looked at her warily, asking where the information that she had been forcibly taken came from. Lee replied that she could have said no. She believes that Miss Sue wanted to meet for other reasons. The woman wanted to know all the details. The interviewee stood up and replied that her daughter was like a doll who couldn't do anything on her own. Lee stated that she was with her because of this. Placing a hand on her shoulder, Ching's gaze immediately fell on her hand. With indignation, Sue asked her interlocutor what she meant. Her daughter's hand went up slightly. Behind her, she replied that she was asking for help and there was nothing Lee could do. Madam was holding a bag of medicine. She asked Sue if she knew what it was and immediately told her that it was her medicine that Ching Ying bought. The woman asked in confusion why she did it. She was answered that Ching Ying became happier buying them for Lin. It turned out to be an exciting experience for her and added that isn't the story strange. In was very concerned, she let her gaze go so that her cat prevented her from viewing her full expression. At this time, the guy, thinking about something, brought a small cup to his lips. Jobin stood not far away, saying how upset Ching was, and thanks to their errand, she was able to go out to get the medicine. With slight concern, Lee asked how she would feel if she had to do simple tasks on her own. Madame Su confidently inquired if she should thank her for that. The girl didn't need any thanks, after all. She considered Ching Ying as her friend. Mr. Wu smirked thinking to himself that it was time to add oil to the fire. He said scornfully how they were sick of it, fiddling with her daughter all day, 
Jobin looked at him in surprise. She immediately realized what was going on and excitedly started telling him that Ching Ying was her friend, and she wouldn't. The guy immediately interrupted her and started asking her anxiously if she was tired, how she was helping and getting nothing in return. He felt sorry for her. She hugged him lightly and began to calm him down, telling him not to say that. Bringing his cheek close to hers as he looked thoughtfully in her direction, Li asked him not to swear for her sake at least. Ching Ying thought in confusion that if she didn't know this lie she would have bought it. Mrs. Su lowered her gaze and began to think whether she should really thank her. She said that she understood her good intentions. She continued, and turning to her daughter told her that she could do as she pleased from time to time. She was lucky to have met such a friend. With joy on her face, Jobin praised Ching and replied as many people loved her. The mother and daughter also smiled. The woman remarked that it was getting late and they wouldn't bother them again. She asked her daughter not to take on too much. Sue smiled satisfied. She let her stay at Mrs. Lee's place and started to leave. The white door in the room slammed shut, letting her know she was really gone. Ching's face immediately changed to a relieved one after that. She finally felt freer. Lee also felt the same way. Her expression changed to a calm one and she exhaled. The boy watched them with an edge of his eye, feeling the atmosphere in the room shift to a more calming one. Jobin looked at the road through the window, cars passing by and turning to Su Ching Ying said that her mom had left without leaving any of the guards behind. Ching happily hugged the guy, telling him if he was really angry, he told her that it was only a game. He pulled his cell phone out of his pocket, wondering who he should call first. Lee Jobin immediately stopped him. Raising his hand, she asked what he was doing and there was no need to make a fuss just yet. She squeezed his wrist harder. He stated to her that he never said anything about wanting trouble. Lee mentioned that Mrs. Sue had backed off and he could already date Ching as much as he wanted. She wondered what else was needed. The guy asked her if she liked keeping their relationship a secret. She looked at him in love. He said she wouldn't need to be torn between love and family if she followed him. Jobin stared at them in confusion as they were enveloped in a romantic aura Ching only called him her favorite. You put his palm on her shoulder, bringing out the pleasantries and told her he needed to make a call. He watched in anticipation, telling her if she called, all power and words would be in her hands and her mother wouldn't be able to control in. The young man asked if she wanted it and there was doubt on the girl's face. She was interjected again, called by name and she only lowered her gaze as she thought about it. Daring to answer, Ching clenched her palm tightly, turning it into a fist. Gathering all her strength, she confidently declared that she wanted what Wu had told her. He started flipping through the numbers in his contact lists, looking for the right person to call. Ching Ying looked at him with interest as he told her that they were starting and pointed the phone to her ear. The young man stared at the phone. Mrs. Lee and Sue stood beside him, waiting for some words. Mrs. Lee stared at his phone. The girl thought to herself about how close they were. With confidence, she headed towards them because she wanted to be close to him too. Sitting down next to him, she immediately grabbed him under his arm, pulling him slightly towards her. The guy looked away from her in amazement and asked if she was tired. He said he would put her on speakerphone. From the phone rang out a question of who is calling. The young man began to say that Bai Kaifeng asked him to clarify for warehouses and asked if he made a decent amount of money. With anger, he was asked who he was. Wu set a meeting place. Ching looked questioningly as Zhou Bin asked if he had decided to bypass the Su family with such strange words. Without worrying, he only said that this is the way to achieve internal division. Ying was thrilled, but Mrs. Li advised her to reconsider the plan. He only asked if she wanted to make a bet with him. Wu Chen went first, telling the two girls to wait and drink tea. Walking up to the door, the guy put his hand on the doorknob and started to open the door. Walking into the room, he saw a middle-aged man. The man immediately turned to him. The young man only smiled. The man was clearly headed somewhere. He got up and started walking. As he reached the door from which the young man had entered, he realized it was closed. Yao Honglin looked at him with slight apprehension. He immediately asked he was the person who called. The man was furious while Chen smiled calmly and replied positively. He was immediately asked where Bai Kaifeng was and how much he was paid. Yao Honglin nervously offered him a large amount of money in lieu of such information. He answered him that the money was later reminding the man of his deeds in which he had made a beginning. The principal looked at the young man, telling him not to jump to conclusions. Wu Chen began to manipulate him by talking about being on a barren hill. Anger immediately appeared on the auctioneer's face as he offered him a huge sum. The guy told him not to be nervous, mentioning that business had gone downhill and asked him the name of the mistress who helped. He was even angrier, already this time offering two billion or three but in installments. Ching Ying burst into their room. Jobin was behind her, she turned to Mr. Yao. Mr. Yao was shocked. He immediately looked in her direction. Sue and Lee were already in the room. They also started to look in his direction. 
Chen put his hand on the man and asked them why they were back so early. The man worriedly asked if they had heard everything. Ching Ying asked Mr. Yao with seriousness if it was true about the murders and fires. He began to stammer, the young man looking at him with a smirk waiting for an answer, taking a teapot and pouring a tea-like liquid into a cup from it. Yao said there was no need to rake up the past. The guy said that he didn't need money. A terrible thought ran through the man's mind. He was scared and only said thank you. The interlocutor wanted in return for him to support all of Ching Ying's words. Relief appeared on the principal's face. He couldn't believe it was that simple. Sue rejoiced when she heard from the man that could he disagree with her. Almost everyone in the room started to smile. He began to drink the drink, thinking that she was the only heiress and he would be in charge of her anyway. He would turn any crisis into a favor. Placing the cup on the table, he offered to seal the deal and complimented that she would always be his leader. Wu said his word of honor and asked if Yao would spend, he happily declined. Zobin immediately thundered that not everyone would buy into Jen's threats. This is only one voice among the directors. The young man asked with interest that she wanted him to say. In looked at them while Lee grudgingly mentioned that she had no idea who he would blackmail and it wouldn't work on everyone. He didn't need everyone. Sue enthusiastically asked how many more people were needed. She was told that there were five left. They could continue the tea party without him. She advised him hopefully not to overexert herself. Lee looked in his direction a little anxiously. Chen was talking to some man who looked as if he didn't understand what was required of him. He was around the corner, smiling and raising his hand as the woman looked at him with confusion. The guy was talking to another man. A cup of drink in his hands, he wasn't looking particularly trusting. The man looked very tired. He brought his hand up and placed it on his head as if leaning on it. The guy followed to the car, wishing the two girls good luck, who looked to follow him. Jobin looked sternly at W, having poached six directors and the vote was only two to three. She wondered what he would do with the rest. It was hard for him to explain. She would see everything tomorrow. Ching took Chen under her arm, saying that she would obey him. He smiled at her. Behind them, Lee was surprised. Turning towards the other girl, he asked if she would mind if he discussed something with Ching Ying. She walked over to him and grabbed him under the arm as well, giving him a negative answer. Ying was content to hold the young man under his arm. He asked Lee what he should do. She only said to go. The house was of beautiful interior, two stories, with lights burning in all the rooms. Jobin sent Ching away to take a shower, grabbing W's hand. He immediately asked her why send her away, to which she told him to shut up. They were close to each other. The girl averted her gaze while the guy looked at her. She flailed to kiss her. Putting his leg over it, he supported her so she wouldn't fall. Kissing her, he wondered if it was her first time. In the midst of all this, he pondered, doubting that Lee could do something when Sue could walk out at any moment. He started to play along with her. They pulled back a little and grabbed her legs well. He realized it was for the paparazzi. The girl looked at him with obvious surprise over such actions of his. A photographer was painting nearby. He took a picture of them in this position as she was sitting on the balcony and was very close to him. After a while, they were already standing side by side. He immediately told her that the paparazzi had left. She wasn't surprised from the fact that he was calm then. She offered to rest. The sky was incredibly beautiful. There were quite a few high-rise buildings and somewhere there were lights and somewhere there weren't. This was South Guan City. From the pictures he saw, the man named Ding Ruilong was clearly not happy. He was angry at what they were doing on the balcony. The man was very aggressive when he said the young man's name that he broke the pen that was in his hand. He called a man to him. He looked stern in appearance. His name was Jian Chuan. The former SWAT member asked if his name was. The man ordered him to find Wu Chen and make him suffer while heading east. Holding the guy's information in his hand, Jian Chuan said that he would need five days, to which Ding Rilong said after three days. The former special forces member with a stiff expression immediately understood everything and did not argue. Jing Ying was sleeping sweetly lying on top of Chung. He had already woken up so he was telling her to wake up. She ended up on the other side of the bed and flailed about her desire to sleep some more. The guy said once she got off work she could sleep as much as she wanted. Asked if she remembered what he had taught her yesterday. She answered affirmatively and turned to her thoughts about her fate being decided today. The guy got out of bed and headed for the door, with the intention of leaving the room. Jobin appeared in the doorway and told him to go. She would also give him a ride to the company. There were two people standing by the car. They wanted to talk to Sue about the previous proposals and the plan to increase the brand value. Sue turned to Lee and with a smile immediately announced that they would see each other again. With a stern look, she told the two people to go while their faces showed incomprehension of this girl's behavior. There was some kind of sign on the wall. It was the same office that had been asked to be prepared for the director's meeting. The woman angrily yelled at Ching Ying whether she knew what she was saying. She demanded to fire Zhou Da and Yang Ko if anything. 
to call the board of directors, to which the woman replied that it was too much. She looked serious and stated who she is, and she has the authority to call the board. Since she is the vice president, she doesn't need permission to dismiss. The girl turned to one of the women. She asked her something and the woman looked tense. Someone's feminine hand tapped the table, creating unnecessary or intentional noise in the room. She started talking angrily about something, her gaze directed to one place or person. Ching Ying recalled the moment when Chen held the flash drive in his hands, holding it out to her. The girl gave a disgruntled look, saying she had proof. She stood up, reciting a five-year-old story in which there had been a robbery of their company's big store. It had the highest level of security. Ching held the remote in her hand, preparing herself to turn on the screen and show something to the others. The screen showed how their stock went down in two days because of this incident. No one could believe that such a store could be robbed. With a confident look, she went on to say that the director should take responsibility, but she was most interested in letting the world know that their company would solve the security problems. People were confused. Sue was not like herself, and she spoke of the possibility of bringing the stock back to its former performance if Joe Da was fired. The woman understood her, but asked what about Yang Ko if she wanted Dub and he was responsible for what had happened. With slight bewilderment, the girl replied that Ian didn't work in their company, so why should he take the responsibility? Madame Sue didn't understand what the girl was talking about, but she only wondered if Yang Ko was her bodyguard. After that, it dawned on her that she didn't care about the cause and was just looking for an excuse to rebel. She ordered all directors to be called, informing them that the meeting would be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Li Jobing asked what Wu Chen was doing and why he wasn't doing anything, to which he replied how he wanted to see Su Qing's capabilities, and right now he was just drawing. The girl gave him a business-like glance and asked what he was going to draw. In his sketchbook were the marks of a future drawing. With a small smile, he said he was drawing her. The pictures from yesterday flashed through his mind. He was confident in Ding Rui Long's course. He needed to act. Not particularly friendly, Li asked the young man what he was doing. He expressed his desire to paint her portrait. Digging around with papers, she replied that she was busy and wouldn't be able to pose. Holding up the paraphernalia, he said he didn't care if she posed or not, so he asked her to ignore him. There was a painting group open on his phone. He knew there was someone there who knew about Long. He proceeded to paint Jobin. Comments ranged from positive to advice not to ponce around. Pointing his phone at the album, the guy snapped a picture of his drawing. Wu sent a picture of himself with Lee Jobin in the chat room, writing that he's still working on it. Everyone was shocked by his work and many compliments were showered on him. He turned his attention to some picture of a lake, trees, and grass. The guy was looking at the phone screen with a sly smile, waiting for something in response. His smile grew even wider, as if he'd gotten what he'd been waiting for. A thought flashed through his mind. Chen remembered his older sister from Juilong High School. As it turned out, they had a daughter out of wedlock, and he was now in contact with his older sister. But as time went on, they went their separate ways. The daughter was left with the woman, and she is 14 years old. He replied to her that only experiences are shared in this group, and that advice is serious business. The woman was excited, texting him while he cautiously replied. The woman's lips lifted in a slight smile. She told herself that her persistence had paid off, and with that she was pleased. She asked where he was. Chen smiled slyly, realizing that it was much simpler than he thought. The woman sitting on the couch held her phone in her hands. She was still smiling easily. She decided to look at her phone, and her lips turned up into a satisfied smile again. The guy was looking at his phone with interest, holding it at a tilt, reading the message. Wu sighed with relief when it was a success and began to ponder his plans. His fingers were wrapped in white thread like people who can control puppets. The woman was sitting on the floor, and these threads were on her arms and legs. She looked vulnerable. He gazed shrewdly somewhere, thinking further and further about something. The young man was already across from Lee and put it to her that he had some business to attend to. With interest, he pulled out his phone, about to call someone. In his thoughts, he tweaked that the woman's daughter was part of the plan. Calling him immediately answered with an obvious question. He immediately began with threats warning what kind of death this man would have if Juilong found out about it. The interlocutor started to deny while the guy was heading somewhere. He threatened to find Li Tai Jo. He was offered to discuss everything. The guy set a time to meet. It was at 3 in the afternoon, saying he would send the address later. A director's meeting was starting in the office, and the woman asked for the door to be closed. Getting serious, she said the meeting was starting. Unexpectedly, Li appeared. Her appearance was too open to the public. Ching Ying started to say that everyone had heard about the agenda of the meeting. Many people were nervous, and she said that everyone could speak up. She firmly complimented that her opponents would be able to argue their position. The woman looked at her with a bit of surprise. 
Everyone seated was shocked and disturbed by such statements from the girl. The guy's eyes shone like headlights in the darkness. His face was serious about what was happening. The two men sat side by side, one looking at the other as he lowered his gaze and didn't know what to do. Miss Sue started clapping her hands, saying how in surprised her. But today's situation is not feasible. Ching glanced with irritation. The woman started to say that Joe Da is a long employee, did not make a single mistake, because of which firing it would upset others. The man rubbed his forehead tiredly with a towel. His work looked extremely hard. Relief appeared on the other people's faces and they started talking about something. The woman was pleased with herself for no one said anything against her. And she went on. To herself, she thought to herself that Ching Ying didn't refute the words as she continued to bend the principles towards her. Ching Ying turned her attention to her. Crossing her arms on her chest, she looked questioningly. The woman jumped up from her seat. She started to say something while looking towards the principles. The man started to raise his hand. They looked at him with astonishment and Miss Sue thought that this miracle would dare to raise his hand. Two men also began to raise their hand. She was surprised it wasn't just one man. In her mind was that it was impossible. Besides Yao Hong Lin started to lift and Pei Chang He, Sun Hao Ming, Wan Wen Chang and Song Yuan Ming. And Chen Lei began to raise her hand. Hopelessness could be seen on her face. Miss Sue sternly turned to Lei, forcing her to explain herself. After all, she was the one who helped her get settled. Ching grudgingly asked her mother not to influence the voting. She began to raise her hand little by little with irritation. The directors sitting around the table were discussing something. They were terribly exhausted. Ching Ying remembered what her boyfriend had told her. She needed to be more determined for others to lean towards her. After that memory and his words, thinking about something, she looked determined. She immediately glared fiercely, asking who else was supporting her. Some man brought his hand, slightly clenched, to his lips, as if deciding on something. The man, after briefly thinking, also raised his hand. It was Tang to Yang. Miss Su addressed the man as brother to Yang with a bit of disdain, but she didn't have time to finish. He told her that Ching Ying had already grown up and she should understand everything. Such words angered her, pounding on the table she called it nonsense. With a kind of disdain, she told her that it wasn't enough and offering to see who would stand against her. Her hand was on the table. Apparently, she made a loud noise with her hand again. The worried directors began to talk about something at the table, looking at each other. Ching remembered the guy's advice again. She listened to him carefully, and he said to make her mother surrender. She was confident, but still in her thoughts, as if wondering what to do. The girl asked her if Miss Sue was sure of what she wanted. Miss Sue replied to her that she had nothing to fear and could still control her, in calmly stated that she might not vote for her and how much of a laughingstock they would be. She clenched her fist tightly, thinking about what she had said, realizing that if she didn't support Ching, then the company might get red hot. In front of her eyes was in, and if that happened, the stock would collapse and the company would go bankrupt. There were different people around her. It was as if they disliked her and shunned her. In the office, people were anxious and cowering. One man staring into a computer screen. In was close to a screen that showed their firm's statistics and all sorts of notations. The woman was in her own thoughts, looking sternly into the distance. All the while, she held herself with her hand on the edge of the table, turning around and heading somewhere. Ching stared at her back while her thoughts were on what happened to the family. She left the room. The door slammed and closed. She didn't care. Ching Ying looked at the others with serious intentions and asked who else was supporting her. Everyone's hands were raised, Ching said. Apparently everyone agreed. After looking at them all, she announced that the meeting was over. She began to walk away with a slight weariness on her face. Wu Chen was driving and talking to Boss Lu. The latter suggested a snack, to which the guy asked what was wrong. Boss Lu said gravely that he needed his help. Chen thought that there was enough time for a meeting, causing him to say that it would be soon. It was an unusual house on the west side of town. It had two stories in it. Lu's boss immediately started telling him that he wouldn't even be able to imagine what had happened. Lifting up the man's hair, there was a little blood. He told him to look at it. The guy asked if it was the aftermath of his first love. Lu grabbed his arm saying she threw a cup at him and chased him away. He asked how to get him to accept it back. The guy asked him to take his time and wait, to which he was told by Lu that he couldn't wait. They sat down at the table and Chen poured a drink into a cup, asking to be told everything. He brought a hand to his chin, beginning to recall the right events. The woman was uncomfortable with the man kneeling and holding an obviously expensive ring. He was later with an expensive car. The woman didn't like his behavior. The guy cut him short and said that such actions were insulting to her because he was trying to woo her with money. He remembered the moment she had threatened to go abroad if he showed up again. Coming out of his musings, he enthusiastically realized why the woman was reacting the way she was. He asked Chen if he had any advice. The guy replied positively. With a small smile, he offered to start with his son or work things out today. 
The man confusedly said he was choosing the second option, wondering what he should do. Chen said that the method was quick, but the man interrupted him and said that money was not a problem for him and he could transfer the amount now. The man began to say something, looking at the boy with a concentrated look. The young man moved a little closer to Lou and started talking about how they could pull it all off. A man was standing near some door to an apartment. A guy was looking at everything through a screen. He started to ask if Xiaofang was home, but was told that she was dead and asked not to come. While he was asking Xiao Fan to open the door, someone inside started walking towards that door. The woman opened the door and asked unfriendly how long this could go on. The man held out a bag of food, saying that when they had no money, they ate Tianjin-style Jianbing all the time. She slapped the bag with anger, replying that she didn't want anything from him. The man was shocked. The food was lying on the floor. Lu bent down to pick it up from the floor. The woman just stared. The woman's son came out to him, irritably asking him to leave as quickly as possible. Hui Fang told him not to interfere and to go inside. Lu said that there was no need to take out his anger on his son. The security guards complained to them, unhappily saying that they were disturbing the neighbors like half an hour. The man awkwardly began to apologize. The man demanded to go into the apartment and deal with things there. She said they were on time and Lu needed to get out of here. The man grabbed Lu's hand and told him to go. He replied that he wasn't going to leave. After all, he was just talking to his wife. He got free and stepped away from the guards. He was ordered not to yell at the men. Lu replied that they had no right to interfere. The guy kicked the man in the stomach, saying it was time for him to be taught a lesson. They started punching him in the stomach while he screamed that he wouldn't leave his wife and son. They were his raison d'etre. Wu Chen watched this game through a large monitor where Lu was being beaten and what was happening. He grinned, thinking to himself what should be happening right now. The son and his mother angrily told to stop it while Lu was punched in the face with a fist. The son was furious, for his father had had his hand raised on him. He was ready to get into a fight. Hui Fan could no longer watch what was happening and irritably shouted at them to stop beating him. Her expression was annoyed. She started saying something to the people there. She walked over to Lu, extending a hand saying to help him to his feet. He didn't hesitate to take her hand in his, addressing her as Zhao Fan. The guy complimented the two guys on their work and said it was okay to wrap up. One of them opened his phone and said that if they were fighting again, he could dial them then. He turned to one of the monitors, which had a battered man in it, and he winked at him as if to say thank you. The guy's face was determined, thinking about getting down to the real business at hand. Chen was on his way to a meeting. Half an hour late, the interlocutor told him not to try to fool him. At no small speed, he started to turn in. He was told to let him know when he was coming. The guy went into some building that looked like a cafe. There were some jars inside. He raised his hand in greeting and smiled, apologizing for being late. Abruptly, there was a clatter on the table. A cup with a hot drink was not far away. There were others standing next to the man with guns. He was unhappy about being late and asked if he had spoken to him on the phone. The guy indifferently asked if he wanted to discuss his dirty deeds in front of others. With this, further enraging John Howe, hitting the table, he asked who he was. Chen said that he wasn't interested in having a normal conversation and started looking for something on his phone. He was shocked to hear Li Zhou Tai. Thinking to himself, he realized that it was Wu Chen. Zhou Tai asked what happened and if help was needed, Chen said he had a traitor. The man was startled to hear Zhou start to load the barrel, threatening to kill the traitor. He immediately fell to his knees in front of the guy after saying that. The man was terrified. With panic on his face, he started tugging at his shorts. Chen called out the employee's number. Hanging up the phone, W asked if he was ready to talk. He was told to go upstairs and talk. The guy was sitting at the table. Jin Hao was apprehensively pouring tea for him. Lu called and asked where he was. Chen said he was busy, but he offered to help him. Yu accepted his help, for he could use his influence. He gave the address. The man asked him if there would be another guest. Chen asked him not to worry and sit down. The man replied negatively. There was hot tea next to his mouth, and he started to say something to the person he was talking to. Two guys were standing outside the building. They were security guards. One was looking at a passing Jobin. Zhou Tai found out the truth and Jin Hao barely managed to avoid his bullet in the head. He asked apprehensively for all instructions. He agrees to do everything. The guy said his assumptions that Ding Rui Lun would send a man to him. He didn't understand what was required of him. Having said something to him, the guy only looked away. Not understanding, Jin said that information and elimination was not his responsibility. He still had a look of incomprehension on his face as he continued to speak to him. The guy answered him holding the drink in his hands and smelling the odor from it. While Chen continued to speak calmly, the man was thinking about something with a worried face. His face became serious as he looked at the man and continued to speak his words. Lu walked over to them saying hello to Chen, who returned the favor while Jin was surprised. Calling him Mr. Men, he grudgingly asked why there were so many people here. 
Hao restlessly said it was a mistake, while Chen added that they were friends. Lu confidently stated that if anyone dared to touch him, he would tear them apart. Chen had influential people because of which he was able to start a great transformation. The guy looked stern, his lips in a slight smile while someone was behind him. Someone's phone started ringing, thus disturbing the conversations. Chen picked up the phone while talking to someone, a bad feeling on his face. He had to deal with something he said he had to deflect because of... A red car was driving down the road somewhere. Its headlights were on causing them to glow. The guy inside this car was talking to someone. He looked a little sad. The girl was crying. She was upset and on the phone with her boyfriend. Next to the girl were bodyguards. She carried groceries thinking her husband's success needed to be celebrated. She remembered that she probably hadn't brought her apartment keys with her. One bodyguard suggested picking the lock and then having it repaired by a specialist. She supported his idea. He immediately began picking the lock, picking at the door hole with fine instruments. Eventually the door swung open, a sign that the bodyguard had done the right thing. The girl in the apartment was surprised that the door opened. The other girl upon entering the apartment was also surprised that someone was here. The girl anxiously turned to the other as Miss Su. She asked Miss Mu what she was doing in Chen's apartment and where he was. With sadness, she replied that he wasn't here and would have to wait for him to come back. Her bodyguards started coming by, suspecting she might be harmed but she said they were friends. Miss Mu said in confusion, since they are friends let them come in. Miss Su walked in and started to take off her shoes, putting slippers on her feet. Mu sadly thought that there was something between them since she was so calm. Su asked her how long she had been here. She was too thoughtful. She was interrogated and she replied that she had come in a couple minutes ago. Miss Su walked on asking when Chen would be there. The girl told her that she would appear soon. Su offered her a seat with a smile while she sorted out her things. Mu grabbed a chair, with the intention of moving it and sitting down as she was told. Already sitting down, she wondered why she obediently complied with her request. She had the impression that the landlady of the apartment was this girl. Her thoughts went over the top and she thought they had some sort of relationship. After a while, Miss Sue returned and offered her something to drink. In mild bewilderment, she considered that they shared things in common and lived together. Unable to bear it, she asked Sue if they were dating. With a calm smile, the girl asked her the same question. Taking a bottle from the refrigerator, Sue calmly asked her how much she and Wu Cheng were. Confused, she replied that it started like a couple days ago. The answer surprised her, and the girl said that you should call her big sister then. Mu didn't realize which sister. It was already evening in the city. Only the houses where the light was coming from and the street lights themselves could light the way. The guy looked tired and was still driving, and he was frustrated that there was traffic at this hour. He made his way to his house, taking his key and pointing it at the keyhole about to open it. Opening the doors, he could smell the smell of food, wondering if Mu Qian had cooked it. He was stunned when he walked into the kitchen and saw the two girls cooking together. They were glad to see him back. Su said he was just in time, asking him to wash his hands before eating. Qian realized that the girl had started calling her younger sister and asked the reason for this change. Chen said that she was older than her. She grudgingly asked if she looked like her little sister. Mu grabbed him under his arm and said they had some things to discuss. Why he was a husband to her and how long they had been together. Wu asked why she was saying that. Like a child who is still learning to speak, the girl asked to be told. Su reminded them that it was already time to eat and they could talk later. The girl only answered her positively, wondering again why she was called the little sister. There was enough food on the table. Su gave him a piece and seemed to eat. Chen asked how everything went at the board. The girl replied that it was just as he thought. Qian was not happy with their conversations. Annoyed, Mu said she wasn't interested in their affection and asked what he hadn't told her. The guy asked her if Ching Ying had told her everything. She told him that since she didn't want to talk, then she would stay with them. He only offered a room. Miss Su calmly said while looking at him that she would stay here too. Qian thought to herself so she wouldn't blame her later. They were going to bed. Su suggested she sleep in her room and warned her that they would wake up early. The girl only responded positively. She quickly headed somewhere. Chen and Su didn't realize what she was doing. She walked into someone's room, walking farther a drain. He replied that it would be soon. He arrived at a tall office building. Being inside it screamed to him that 40 minutes was no way to soon. Lee turned her back to him. The zipper on her dress had come undone and she motioned for him to zipper it up quickly. Fulfilling the request, they held hands and headed for the office. She was pleased with him. There was a guy and a man sitting in the office. He was serious. And the guy asked what made him linger. Jobin sternly asked her father why he had decided to come so unexpectedly. The boy grinned. Lee's father looked fierce. He was not pleased with the boy's presence, much less his tardiness. Her father grudgingly said why did they have to warn her if they had time to prepare. Lee said it wasn't time yet. 
Annoyed, the man said that since she couldn't take care of her younger brother, having already asked, she decided to kick him out of Donghai as well. She asked in surprise, wondering if it was her fault. She was interrupted by the guy with a questioning tone saying why they fight every time. She was sad and thought it was not the time to fight. Chen took the girl's hand in his, not holding it very tightly but loosely. She approached him, smiling and saying something to her father. The guy was smiling too. The guy looked blissed out by the whole situation and started to say something. The man was displeased and even annoyed that he had spoken, a vein showing on his forehead. The young man wanted to help, but in his mind, he realized that he couldn't help his sister in any way. He angrily threw a piece of paper on the table and yelled if he was trying to fool him. Brother worriedly said that he had found everything related to Wu Chang. Turning away, the man flailed that he wasn't going to believe it, for the real Chen was dead. The guy didn't believe his words, for he was doing a DNA test. The guy held up the papers and looked at them with a serious look, mouthing something. With a smirk, the man said that it was Jobin's ploy and she had planned everything in advance. Father's face changed. More calmly, he told Xiao Wu to sit back down, mentioning that he had recently graduated from university. Chen agreed, saying he works for Jobin's company. The man asked his specialty. He said his major is computer science, and he plans to make Jobin's company his first choice. The man in his thoughts decided to change the subject. To find out the truth, he asked about his hobbies. Wu easily named his hobbies, Li thought. Her father had never questioned her like that before. 21. With a smile, he also added that he knew about guns. With amazement, the man asked him again if he knew about guns. Jobin looked at her father with pity in her eyes, for this was a sore subject for him. It looked like some kind of machine gun that could be fired at long range. It was disassembled, and there were a couple bullets nearby. He confirmed his words by saying that he had several blueprints, had collected the models himself, and knew what the weapons were made of. Jobin tried to figure out what else the guy would do and why he was backing himself into a corner. The man huffed and turned to Tao, asking if he had a weapon. Tao replied positively and began rummaging through his jacket pockets for a weapon. He pulled a gun out of his pocket and began to hold it out to Chung. Chen picked up the gun, looking at it with interest. The man asked him if he knew the type of gun. He called it a 94 and described it. Lee still didn't understand what was happening, going over in her head the reasons for this behavior. The guy decided to estimate his weight and said there were probably six bullets in there. All the bullets in the gun's magazine began to spill out of the magazine. The guy confirmed his hunch with that. There were six of them. Jabin gingerly thought he was trying to reveal himself. The man thought to himself that he was doing it on purpose, but then realized it was all on purpose, and after analyzing the situation, admitted that they were in a real relationship. He further began to think, coming to the conclusion that he was trained to SWAT level. He mused that the guy was very talented. He watched with interest. Jobin was a little shocked. The man's lips were ajar. He further said something to his interlocutors. Chen only smiled, saying that he wouldn't have had another chance. He asked him if he could have a private conversation with him. Lee indignantly grabbed his arm, asking what they wanted to talk about. She didn't want to go anywhere. The man said the guy himself suggested it and why get mad. His hand was on her arm. He gently said that if she stayed, it would be difficult for her uncle to discuss some matters with him, for it would hurt her feelings. She smiled at his words and said she understood. Jobin started walking towards the door. Leaving the room, Tai was about to go as well. As they walked out together, Lee asked if there was video surveillance. He said yes. She offered to watch them through them. The man calmly said his daughter listened to him, to which he replied that it was easy for them to agree. He walked over to the shelves where the camera was well hidden, taking a bottle of it. Chen tossed the bottle on the floor, figuring they didn't need it here. A special mechanism and a small red camera were visible from the shard of bottles. While in the surveillance room, the girl asked what happened. Tai reassured her by telling her that he still had a couple more. Wu Chen found all the cells, each one trying to close. His hand reached for the other cell with intentions of getting rid of it too. He bent down to the floor, rummaging around there, probably hiding another camera too. The muzzle of a gun was suddenly pointed toward him. He looked a little worried. The muzzle of a gun appeared behind him. The man pointed the gun and asked seriously what he was doing near Joban. The girl looked at the monitors. They showed nothing and she asked Tai what was wrong with the cameras. Perplexed, he only said that he himself didn't understand what had happened to them. As the girl continued to stare into the screens, Chen turned to face the man. He was still holding the gun towards him. He noticed that Jobin and Tai were also pointing guns at him. He calmly stated that the gun was probably not loaded. The man began to place the gun on the table after these words, his hand lowering the weapon fully. He looked at the boy with a kind of pride, telling him something. Bullets sprinkled on the table, confirming that they were not in the gun. The guy with a smile started to reply something, looking rather calm. 
He realized the guy wasn't afraid of him since he said so, and suggested he get to the point. Wu smiled slyly, mouthing that he was forcing Jobin to marry Zhuilong, and she could fire bullets into his forehead. The man created a ruckus from such words by pounding his palm on the table. There was anger on his face. He angrily asked if he was trying to lecture him. Lee paced worriedly around the room. She motioned for her brother to go into the next room. She went into the other room, leaning a glass against the wall. Behind the wall would be the couch where they were talking. Leaning her ear against the glass, the girl said she couldn't hear anything. Tao only replied to her that he had used better soundproofing during the renovation. Chen said that Rui Long is stubborn, and his life in the Ding family will not be long. He reminded his uncle for Dong Yuan Tao. The man unfriendly replied that this child had drowned ten years ago, and why was it necessary to bring him up? The guy astutely stated that there was no accident, it was murder. The man was talking about something, still looking non-trustingly in his direction. The young man mollified that he only meant Ding Ruilong. He asked to look at the motif on his phone. The man stared unhappily at his phone, looking at what he was being shown there, listening to the guy's words. The picture turned out to be some beautiful girl he probably knew. Some man was content while another man was lying on the floor. The girl all shaky. The man was flustered, asked what he was up to. The guy said he was the same and realized what was on his mind. Mentally, he came to the conclusion that if something happened to the Ding family, the Lin family would not be on the sidelines because of the alliance. Chen said that since Jobin was single, their alliance had not yet taken effect. The man looked disapprovingly, thinking he had been deliberately sent to destroy the alliance. Jobin suggested drilling a hole in the wall, because the walls were thick and they might not hear she was holding a drill. Tai started to calm her down. After all, they would have heard the sounds of the drill anyway. She sternly ordered her to think of something. After all, she needed to know their conversation. Frustrated, the guy said he didn't know how to think of a normal way to hear them. Wu said he was only protecting their interests and suggested Dong Yuan Tao as a girl for Tai. He grinned and said it wasn't that simple and there was no trust between their families. The guy picked up his phone, staring into the screen, offering the man a way out of the situation. Lee's father was shocked that he wasn't kidding, and the timing wasn't right for marriage. He reached for the phone and answered it to do nothing. The man stared fiercely at him. His brows furrowed in a frown. He continued speaking again. Chen said without misgiving that he wanted Rilong dead, reasoning that one of them would have to die. Without misgiving, Wu said he was obliged not to exist. The man irritably asked if he had any dirt on the Wei family. He easily answered positively. He said that if his father promised not to disturb them for six months, Chen would tell him everything. There were various tools on the floor, most likely a girl trying to do something with them. Jobin held a small spatula in her hands, thinking it probably wouldn't make much noise. Her brother immediately told her to drop everything because they were already out. She looked at him in surprise. Together, they headed in their direction with confidence as Jobin mumbled something. As soon as she saw Chen, she immediately grabbed under his arm and asked if they were done. He replied positively. The boy approached his uncle, asking what his plans were. He told them he was heading back. A helicopter appeared in the sky from somewhere, making noise all around. The helicopter began to rise into the sky. They realized that their father was indeed headed somewhere. Jobin was close to Chen and asked what he did that her father quickly flew away. He stated if she was building a cutie. Even by the look, it was clear how much she wanted to know. Starting to beg. Noticing all this, her brother awkwardly announced his departure. Lee said embarrassed. If he told, they could work something out. Wu looked at her and said that because of Ching Ying's pestering, he was very tired. The girl pushed him away from her with embarrassment, calling the guy shameless. He instantly reached for her arm, gripping it tightly in his hand. Pulling her to him, he said that because of this manner, she was also shameless then. Jobin only snickered unhappily at his words being close to him and turned away. Chen asked if she was jealous and said that he had just told the whole truth about Ding Rulong. She was shocked. She looked at him and he thought it was an advantage. Lee confidently stated that Chen fits all of her points, causing her to fall in love with him. She looked like a cat with cute paws where the claws are, ears, and a harmless look. But with seriousness, the girl said she would not be the obedient pussycat for him that he might have imagined her to be. Who started clapping his hands saying how beautiful this speech was and wished her luck. He reached out asking if she could give him a massage. Jobin replied only if he started begging. The thought of who it could be struck her. She immediately asked him if the girl was from the Wu family. The guy calmly stated that it was Yu Rong's daughter. Jobin couldn't believe it after all, she was very famous and was Dong Wei's daughter. The woman looked very beautiful and obviously solid, her face expressing calmness. She worriedly asked him not to do such an action. He only smiled at her and said that she was called Dong Hai's first beauty. Li clenched her hand into a fist that was close to her feet. She embarrassingly offered to give him a massage and become his. 
The guy only replied that the massage and meeting Song Xuan Yi was just an excuse. Li excitedly asked what he was trying to accomplish. Wu replied that it wouldn't hurt her in any way. He headed for the exit of the building, saying goodbye and waving his hand. The building was not a small one. There were umbrellas outside to sit under and there were tables inside. Chen found himself in some cafe, he turned to Sun and she said hello to him. He replied in the same way, shaking hands. The girl asked if he wanted something to drink. Wu declined. Sun asked interestedly if he had brought the songs and in what format. The guy asked if she had paper and pen. The girl wanted to know the reason. The young man replied that he wanted to write a song for her. She asked in surprise how it was for her. In all seriousness, he stated that it was all in his head, pointing a finger to his temple. The girl couldn't believe it and stated that he might be hated for it. He held up a thick notebook along with a pen, handing it back to the girl. The girl holding the notebook was immersed in the world of music, and it was as if she could hear the song in her head. She was pleased, remembering what the other songs had been and noting that it turned out pretty well. The guy interrupted her from her thoughts and asked if she would buy his composition. Sun agreed with his question admiringly. The girl holding the notebook looked displeased and started talking about something. Chen calmly mouthed that he would not bargain with her, and she needed to decide if she would take his song. Xuan put down the notebook and refused to take this song for such a large amount of money. The young man reached for his notepad, stating that their meeting was then complete. But he said he would not tear a leaf from his notebook, for to him the girl did not seem to be the type to steal songs. He stood up and after saying goodbye to her began to walk away from that building. The girl holding the notebook only called him a weirdo. Chen walked into Wei Shan's music company and was greeted. He approached the woman saying he needed a recording room for three hours. She asked to follow him. The guy was sure that Sun would still come back after all. Soul medicine was a hit in every reincarnation. They went into the room. The assistant asked if he needed a sound engineer or a tuner. He said he would do everything himself. Three hours later, the tape was ready. W held it in his hand. It was left to him to publish it. Talking with Ching Ying, he learned that Qian was not going to study abroad, approaching his car. He happily complimented her on the job she'd done, getting into the car and fastening her seatbelt. The guy started to check out. Ching stated that they wouldn't see each other and she needed to be home. Chen said it was fine. The young man noticed another black car following his car, trying to catch up with him. Looking in the mirror, he realized that these were Zhuai Long's men. With a smile on his face, he took the wheel, most likely about to do something. He began to increase the speed on the car, apparently trying to break away. Sitting at his computer, he was looking at something on it with interest. Chen uploaded the song to everyone, tagging the author as Chen Wu, thinking Sun would understand. Seven hours later in the morning, the young man was on his way to his workplace. He was curious about the status of the medicine for the soul song. On the table was some kind of flower in an unusual pot, more like a bush. There was a white cushion on the couch, with a print of some trees that had few leaves on them. With a smirk, he picked up his phone, thinking it was likely the pursuers had installed cameras. The guy started to play along with them, calling Lee and asking what time to be there. With a sly smile, he agreed to be in her company by 9 o'clock while in the car. Chen was in the car. He thought something might happen and everything would be in his hands. Pressing down on the gas pedal, the red car tore off. His car appeared behind the black car that was following him. In the interior of the car, the guy immediately realized it was his pursuers, smiling at the thought. Two vans pulled up to him, pinning him in on all sides so he wouldn't get out. With a cocky expression on his face, he looked at them and thought he had their numbers memorized. The red car began to burn due to the pressure of the two vans in front of it. Wu instantly recited the restart to himself, looking very stern. He found himself in bed, grinning and getting ready to play with them. The guy called the right person, warning that he would be attacked soon. He was told not to worry as the person would take care of everything. Chen confidently warned Tai that he needed them alive. He was behind the wheel again, thinking the best option was on the roads and in the underground parking lot. The young man spoke to Tai again. He said they were already being sought. W warned of his whereabouts, saying he could do as he wished. His gaze drifted off into the distance, holding the phone closer to him, waiting for Zhui Long's backup plan. The driver of the car was not happy that the guy pulled into the underground parking lot. He decided to back out. His car slammed into the van pretty good with a distinctive sound. He stuck his head out irritably and asked if he could see where he was going. Behind the stern man stood others with guns, denying him he offered a small talk. There were cars and vans in the parking lot that were supposed to attack Chen, but they were all caught. The man spoke on the phone relaying the information that Li Zhou Tai had captured their men. The interlocutor ordered to go to Plan B. Jiang Chuan sternly told Lao Dao the location and warned him to make sure everything was perfect. I was headed somewhere while at the mall and was asked on the phone where he was. 
He was on his way to the elevator and was told to be in a crowded area and wait there. Smiling, the guy agreed with Lee, calling her dear. The elevator doors opened. Walking inside, the young man noticed a broken camera. He realized that reinforcements were in place. The elevator door should have closed, but instead it paused. Five men surrounded him. He eyed them intently. There was tension in the elevator cabin. The elevator slowly began to close again, showing that they were now on the first floor. His pursuers immediately began to swoop down on him, holding weapons in their hands to attack. He looked piercingly at them all, his eyes beginning to glow. The guy grabbed one man's hand, which contained a knife stopping him. Chen punched his own hand, clenched into a fist from behind his weapon, right on his chin. He swung his foot at the other man who also wanted to attack him. Two men were heading straight for him with fury, holding the semblance of knives in their hands. The guy was able to dodge the first man's punch. The second man was preparing to attack. He stopped suddenly, finding himself in some sort of confusion and not knowing what to do. At this moment, Wu clenched his palm into a fist, aiming it at the man's face. The guy next to Jobin said there was no one in the elevator, and she tensely ordered her to look around for Chen. She headed for the stairs. After asking where the elevator stopped, Lee learned it was on B first. While the guys tried to do something about the elevator, clanking into the panel, Jobin stood behind them waiting. Some man's head emerged from the elevator door, bumped and battered. There was worry on Lee's face. She slightly opened her mouth because of what she saw. A smirking Chen stood in the elevator. He was slightly battered and dirty. He was breathing heavily. The girl and the two men restlessly looked at Wu Chen, checking to see if everything was all right. He addressed her as Dear Lady Li and began to adjust his jacket. Li opened her arms and ran up to him. Looking at her, he didn't understand the reason for this reaction. The guy asked her if she was afraid of getting her clothes dirty. The girl said it wasn't that bad if he said so and told him he needed to go to the hospital. He looked at her tiredly and asked why he was heading to the hospital, reluctantly approaching him and beginning to grope him. Jobin asked if that wasn't his blood. He replied negatively, asking if that was a reason to touch him and did the same as Li. She couldn't believe that he had defeated the armed men himself without injury. Chen pulled away and said that he had only soiled his clothes and could use a shower. From one man's jacket pocket, he started looking for his cell phone. He had something he needed to do. Pulling out his phone, he snapped himself on camera, along with the killers that were lying around behind him. We sent a picture of an unconscious man and a small piece of his face. The guy called on this phone. The voice asked where Lao Dao was and if they were done. He only questioned whether the interlocutor had seen the photograph he had just sent. He was asked a trivial question. Chen ordered this picture to be sent to Zhuilong and warned that he didn't have long to live. After disconnecting the phone, he gave it to another man, saying the owner was wanted alive. Jobin ran up to him, taking him by the hand. The guy said he was leaving Dun Hai for two days. She gingerly asked him if he was going to kill Ding Rui Long, for he was heading to where the man was. Li reached for him and her lips covered his. She begged him not to. The girl was embarrassed. Chen only said that he was not in the right state and it was better to return home. Someone resented being in a not insignificant house. It was beautiful and probably had four stories in it. There was a girl sitting at the table, not believing that the very same song had taken the number one spot of listened to this week. The other was also looking at her laptop and said she had listened to it. The girl said that even famous singers are discussing it and it has good comments. It was a song medicine for the soul. The brown-haired woman asked Xuan if they were really handwritten music sheets. Xuan stood by the window calling Chung to clarify everything with him. She couldn't believe it. Jobin was next to his phone. As soon as it rang, she thought it was Zhuilong's prank. Picking up the phone, Li sternly asked what was needed and if the caller was looking for death. Xuan was perplexed and asked to hand the phone to Chen, reasoning that she wanted to discuss his song. Li was displeased and asked what the song was about, stating to go closer to the point. Xuan looked chagrined and only recounted their recent meeting to her. Jobin disapprovingly asked what the song and apology was about. The girl shocked asked how she didn't know about it. Li asked what these suspicious questions were. Thinking a bit about what to do, she started banging on the door, telling him to open up and the younger one was calling him. She handed him the phone while outside the door. W stated that they could meet today. After hanging up the phone, he turned to Li and said that Xuan wanted to buy his song. She approached him and praised him. He told her he still needed to finish. Jobin smacked him and asked about showcasing other talents. He moved closer and with a chuckle replied that she was playing with fire. A bell rang. She asked indignantly who else could be calling at this hour. After getting out of the bath and picking up the phone, she said it was Zhui Long. Wu replied that she could calmly answer it. The girl listened to Dean's explanation, stating in response that surely these were not Mr. Dean's weaklings. Having just gotten out of the shower, the guy sat on the couch and looked at Jobin with interest. Lee sat on Chen's lap, 
He asked if it was Ding Rui Long and she answered positively, calling him an idiot. The words caused him to place his palm on her thigh as if to slap it. He told her to watch her words because girls don't express themselves like that. Lee pretended like he hit her and mentioned to the tube how everything turned red. The man, hearing all these words, held back his anger with indescribable strength. Chen asked if she realized her mistake or else she would have to be spanked again. She closed her eyes with a sort of caustic tone telling him not to do that. The man was so furious afterward that he threw his phone on the floor. The smartphone was lying on the floor, his foot hitting it hard. Jobin winked and said he'd probably smashed his phone and wouldn't survive from something like that. The guy replied to her that it was too easy. The girl Molly coddled to stop speaking for him and asked W what he was saying for spankings, raising his hands in front of her. He said it was up to her to decide everything. With a serious tone, Chen continued, reminding her of her meeting with Yu Rong and asked if she would play along. Uncomprehendingly, Li asked that he was supposed to have a meeting with Song Xuan. She was surprised when she heard him say that in addition to Xuan, he would also meet with Yu Rong. Brother Li burst into their room, anxiously addressing before them. He sadly began apologizing for his mistake and told the guy to let him know how many bodyguards would be needed next time. Jobin turned to her brother, saying that she knew his scheme and he shouldn't even think about it. Tai indignantly replied that in case Chung was unlucky next time, he needed to eliminate Roy Long. She grudgingly told the young man that since he was his brother-in-law, she would let him talk sense into him. He asked Tai if Lao Dao was alright, the guy replied positively, who seriously stated that he would need to talk to him. Tao asked what it was about and assuming it had to do with Dean's dirt, he confirmed his words, asking him to promise his sister not to do anything stupid. He confidently stated that he was willing to listen to him. Lee felt relieved after those words. The guy told him he had some other things to do, holding a cloth in his hand. Some man took a picture of Wu on his phone when he arrived at the meeting place with Xuan. He walked over to the table where she was sitting, turning to her. She lifted her head and looked. Looking at him, she addressed him as an elder and wanted to know something. Chen calmly interrupted Miss Sun and asked what she was going to say. She looked at him seriously, asking if his family owned a small restaurant. He agreed with her, saying it was a noodle store in a small town. Sun speculated why he wanted to sell the song for such a high price. She thought he wanted to get rid of Li, who responded to her. He only smiled at her, saying something back. Xuan said that such an old woman was not worth wasting time on, and she would help him earn money on his own. Sun placed her hand lightly on his palm, squeezing slightly with her hand. She confidently stated that big companies would soon want to have him as their star. Chen removed his hand, saying that her conclusions were wrong and got to the point. Sun happily asked to write another song for her in addition to this one. The guy named the same amount she pretty much agreed to buy for 10000 It was stated that on top of that 50% of the proceeds would go to him. The girl agreed without hesitation. Sun said she would do anything. She wanted the song to be on the level of medicine for the soul, he agreed, asking for paper and pen, and if anything, he would pay her back. Xuan happily held up the song called for you, thinking to herself that it was a song for her. Holding up his cell phone, the guy said he had the money and it was time for him to leave. Sitting behind the wheel of the car, Wu said that after the appetizers, it was time for the main course. Glancing in his mirror, he noticed a white car behind him, telling him that such a part was better to skip. Seeing them, he instantly pressed the gas with his foot with all his might. He took off at high speed. Two white cars didn't have time to follow him. The concerned man spoke to his boss. He said the guy couldn't be apprehended. It was a woman. At such words, she asked him what he next wanted to say. Chen was standing in front of a tall building that looked like an office. The man on the phone said he was heading towards her. The woman was very interested, smiling. She ordered him to be escorted to the 16th floor. Some man escorted him to the right place. He approached the boss and mentioned his presence. He was allowed to enter. The guard led him into the office looking at his back as the guy smiled. The woman looked serious, with another man standing next to her who looked like a bodyguard. Chen immediately asked Yu Rong if she thought this way was rather rude. She answered him indifferently that he was the only one being rude here, and she was unaware of his designs. Yu Rong ordered the bodyguard to leave them alone. He obediently obeyed the order. Walking past Wu, he sternly told him not to even try anything. Yu Jun asked him to sit down and ask the reason for her daughter's interest, hoping it wasn't money-related. The boy calmly asked the reason for such guardianship, for she was not even her mother. She snorted angrily at him. She didn't like those words out of his mouth. Chen looked at the woman in complete seriousness as he answered her back. She held the knife in front of the man who watched restlessly as she screamed. As the man waved his arms around, addressing her, the woman covered her face with her hands. She looked very stern, staring off into the distance and crossing her arms over her chest. She smiled at his words, saying that if he told someone she didn't mind, she wanted to talk for Juan. The woman looked at him with an interested look, smiling slightly and talking about something. 
He confidently stated that perhaps she would reconsider the situation. Bo, he was not interested in his daughter, but in herself. Tucking a strand behind her ear, the woman stated how ambitious he was and what his thoughts were about her. Wu began to say that he would have a hard time because of the way she treated men, and he had no choice but to resort to this method of meeting her. The woman stood, continuing to look in his direction with curiosity in her eyes. With her one hand, she held on with the help of the table, turning to the guy. She walked over to him while Chen was talking about something, lowering her head slightly and closing her eyes. Chen smirked as she approached and milled about since they were alone. What thoughts were hovering in his mind in terms of her? She was now standing across from him, at a normal distance, while he was focused, talking to her. The woman gave a questioning look and asked what this had to do with her. The guy with the cold stare told her without hesitation that he was going to kill him. Without reacting in any way, she wished her luck. Chen advised her to get the invectives out while she had the chance. The guy looked at her with a smile, continuing to talk further with interest. Her shoulders were wide open, facing Chen, she responded to his words. With confidence in his eyes, he cited himself as the cause of such events. The woman asked him if he was trying to intimidate her, leaning slightly toward him. The guy said he was only interested in Joy Long, but she would be drawn into the guy and smirked. He spoke with a shrewd look. There was some man behind the woman as well. He looked businesslike. She also began to speak as if recalling something. The guy added that he is also Ding Wei Long's third uncle. The woman said that he was back at it again, and she had nothing to do with Ding Wei Feng. Chen stated that she didn't realize how much Ho Wang Chu was connected to the Ding family, and if something happened, Ho Wang Chu would reach her. She was shocked by such a statement, and after those words, she realized how connected they were. Yui asked if he was targeting the Ding family as well. Thinking to herself, how will he accomplish all this if he has no background? Wu tells her that Jobin likes her and sees her as a role model, which is the reason he came. The woman didn't believe such absurdity, so she decided to check since he had mentioned Jobin. She picked up her phone, deciding to call Jobin to find out. Mrs. Wu mentioned Chen's presence, he smirked. Lee said she knew about it. He continued to stare at her further. The guy was sure that Jobin would say all the right things, glaring indignantly at the guy. She asked if she knew he was up to pulling a fast one on the Dean family. Lee responded positively. As she continued speaking, Jobin interrupted her, saying that they had discussed all of this with her father, and now the details needed to be discussed by them. Throwing the phone down, Yu Jun thought, how come he doesn't have any opportunities, and the Lee family is working with the Ding family? She turned to him and asked him if he wanted something to drink, because talking like that could make your throat dry. The guy happily accepted the drink and thanked me for it. In her hands was a bottle of wine. Of good provenance, she was heading back. Opening the bottle, the woman began to pour it into glasses. The first was poured as required, while the second began to be poured. Finished pouring, she held two glasses in her hands, holding one out to the other man. They sat together, quietly drinking alcohol. It was a kind of regimen for her. She listened to Chen's explanation for all of half an hour, learning the pros and cons of Rulong's incident with Yuan Tai. Walking up, Mrs. Wu lightly approached and asked if he wanted a refill. She walked over to the other bottles, reading the name of the bottle. It turned out to be a Chateau Petrus 2,000-year-old. The woman couldn't stand for long. Her foot tilted slightly and her shoes couldn't hold her up. In her condition, she couldn't stay on her feet well. Squeezing her eyes shut, the woman expected to land on the floor. Chen managed to pick her up in time, catching the bottle as well. Mrs. Wu was red. She started apologizing. The guy asked if she was okay and it would be bad if she fell. A blushing Yui apologized again, suggesting that she got drunk too quickly. Chen was immersed in his thoughts. He came to the conclusion that she needed a good man and she was something like Zobin. He figured the best way to get closer to her was through physical contact, causing the guy to lightly hug her. Chen told her it was time to call it a day. The woman was still red in the face and replied that she wouldn't drink anymore. She was pleased to meet him. Yu Jun almost fell down again, muttering that they weren't done yet. The guy asked to be careful. Holding them up with her hand, she warned them that it was okay and started to take off her shoes. The shoes were lying on the floor, her foot freed from such a problematic shoe. Chen extended his inner side of his palm towards Yu Zhong. He took Mrs. Wu in his arms. She was surprised at such an action. He thundered that the floor was cold and dirty. The woman thought to herself that she had never met a man like this. He held her in a bridal pose. He looked like some kind of hero. Looking at him, you could see a satisfied smile. The guy sat Yui down on the couch. She looked at him intently and with a little displeasure. Chen poured a drink into her glass, telling her that if she wanted to continue, they could continue talking further. Jun showed annoyance with his whole appearance, questioning him if he had picked her up on purpose. To this question, the guy didn't deny it and agreed that it was on purpose. She didn't like that answer. 
In her mind, she was thinking in her mind that she needed to get rid of him. The guy asked if she was angry and wasn't that what she wanted. The woman asked how he had sobered up quickly when a couple minutes ago he couldn't stand on his feet. She abruptly realized what she had said and realized that he had exposed her. Moving closer to her, Chen milled about, saying that there was no need for her to use the same tactics she used on all men. He was still holding the glass with the dark red liquid in his hands. W pouring a drink stated to her that he knew her better than she knew herself, and they should just have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. The woman responded by asking if he was being overconfident in what he meant. Guy questioned her, bringing the glass to her lips, whether her husband had really committed suicide or whether she herself had driven him to his desperate state. There were men standing on the roof of a multi-story building with guns. Almost on the edge was another man, shivering at what was happening. He warned Yui that that wasn't all, and he knew her as a 42-year-old unmarried woman. You could tell from those words by the way she looked uncomfortable. She waited for the next words. Chen mentioned what she does when she is lonely at night, naming the location of the item. The woman was horribly tense at his words, looking away and pressing her lips together slightly. Holding a glass in his hands, the guy held it up to the woman's hands, saying it was okay, mentioning hormones. The glass was in other hands, looking unfriendly at the young man. He asked her if she had thought for her life she could start over. You filled her in for her song. She remembered the moment playing the piano and realized that no one knew the song but her. Chen gave her a sly look and turned to ask her if she wanted another drink. The woman wryly asked who he even was, thinking to herself that whoever he was, he couldn't possibly know those facts. Chen stood back with his arms crossed over his chest. It was as if there was an ominous aura around him. With calmness, the guy told her that he knew even more, listing moments from her life, mentioning again that he knew her better than she knew herself. He didn't want to be her enemy. Mrs. Wu thought about what she should do with him. She couldn't take his life. Because of that, she was left to get closer to him. The guy was lying on the floor, in a position as if he was no longer alive, his right hand close to his face. Yui was close to Chen, a smile on his lips as she kept her hand on his face. Chen smiled at her. To herself, she noted that he really wasn't bad-looking and had a strong physique. With a piercing look, Jun said they weren't going to be enemies and asked if conflict with the Ding family was imminent. The woman calmly took the glass of liquid he held for her from his hands. They tisked tisk them and the guy said that if she was on his side, Mrs. Wu would be safe and her career would advance. She asked how Jobin felt about it. Chen mentioned to Su Ching that she is also his woman and Li Jiaobing is not the least bit embarrassed by this fact. She only replied that Jin Fu's board results didn't embarrass her, thinking to herself that she could get into their love relationship. Yu Jun sipped from her glass of drink and decided to do what she wanted since it was available. Holding the stem of the glass, she began to set it carefully on the table, leaving some of the drink behind. The woman said she had had enough alcohol and offered to go to her place for a cup of tea to sober up. The guy started to put a shoe on her foot, replying to her that since Mrs. Wu so desired, so be it. As he left the office, she asked him if he had a lot of free time. Holding the woman's hand while she put on her shoes, Chen replied positively. Yui suddenly swooped down on him, hugging him and touching her lips to his. Pulling away, the guy said that such things should be initiated by a man. Her lips were slightly ajar, her cheeks slightly flushed. The guy was looking at her with interest. Her arms wrapped around Chen's neck, he bent slightly to kiss her. She leaned against him, still not letting go as he held her with his arms. Once at her house, he carried her in his arms. The amount she had drunk made her breathe heavily. Chen laid her down on the bed to give her a rest from what was happening. Being in a warm room, he decided to take off his jacket. The guy gripped his sweatshirt with his hands, lifting it closer to his head. He leaned toward the woman, looking up at her as she wrapped her fingers around him. Yui was flushed and as if she felt some kind of excitement. Her gaze swept upwards. A girl entered the house, seeing two pairs of shoes. Male and female, she was surprised. Doubtfully, the girl began to call out to her mother several times, asking her not to be frightened. Yu Jun quickly got up from the bed and realized that Xuan had returned home. With a sleepy expression on her face, Yui started to say something while trying to come to her senses. Xuan was already standing by the door where Yu Jun was. She wanted to ask her something. But seeing her mother's appearance, she only said that she thought a robber had snuck in. The girl felt bad for barging into her mom's room, embarrassing her. With her eyes closed, Xuan mumbled something while walking out of the doorway of the room. Adopting a sitting position, the woman was staring disconcertingly somewhere, running her hand through her hair. Chen looked at her. The phone that was on the bed started ringing, showing someone's name. The phone was slow to pick up. It was still ringing, waiting to be answered. It was unknown who was calling. The woman picked up the phone and answered the same to the caller. Mrs. Wu said into the phone. Chen left his phone next to her. She was asked if he decided to check on John again. 
She lifted her head and only replied that it wasn't quite like that. The guy looked at this whole situation as some kind of fun. The woman was asked if she had found him on her own. Looking at him, she gave a negative answer. Wu smiled further. Her interlocutor asked her where she was. John confidently replied that she was at her place. Madame Wu looked at the guy slyly. She was asked if Chen had spent the night at her place. She was asked if she had been with him, to which the woman answered in the affirmative. Jobin thought to herself how annoyed she was by this behavior and offered to meet with her. Holding the phone to her ear with her hand, she looked displeased. The guy asked how it went, looking extremely calm in the situation. Mrs. Wu replied that Lee would be here soon. She wanted to take a shower. As she left her room, she met her daughter and asked where she was going. Xuan asked if she would interrupt them. The girl watched enthusiastically, holding her bag in her hand, talking to her mom. The woman looked back at her, her kind gaze holding the fabric to her body. She replied that she was taking the opportunity to get to know him better, because they would need to interact in the future. Her mother placed her palm on her head, gently stroking her hair. Xuan mauled that Jun might not tell her about it and she was leaving. The woman only called her a wench. The sun was already shining well in the sky. The weather was probably warm, and there was a beach umbrella on one floor of the house. Jobin walked into the house and immediately bumped into Chen. He called her by name. With a glance at him, Lee declared that he was nothing but surprises. The guy told her thanks, taking it as a compliment and asked if she was jealous. As she walked past him, she mumbled. He gave her a slightly concerned look. Turning to him, Jobin said that couldn't he for one day not piss her off and be considerate of her. Chen leaned slightly towards her, mouthed that he loved her. She looked with her eyes in his direction. In her mind, she couldn't believe that such a fearless Wu Chen was greasing up to her. Jobin began to reassure herself. The girl moved on, asking him if he had ever said such a thing to anyone else, to which she received a negative answer. With joy on her face, Li said she loved him too. He hugged her from the back. The girl asked to wait and asked what Ching Ying and today's date would think about it. Wu said with conviction that those wouldn't do anything. Li replied that she understood. The guy started to walk away, muttering that he would leave them alone to talk. Li stared after him as he walked away. She didn't look happy about it. Her disapproving gaze went in the other direction, as if looking at someone. Jun appeared from the room and graciously apologized for the wait. The girl looked at her with confusion. She didn't like her appearance. Without changing her gaze, Joban immediately offered to cut to the chase, for they were busy people. Mrs. Wu looked neutral and asked what the lady wanted. She announced in a loud voice that she wanted an apology from her right on her knees. Jun replied to her that she didn't understand why she needed to apologize to her. With disdain, Lee stated that if she was going to be with her man, she needed to at least be treated with respect. Mrs. Wu looked down on him and declared that she had no intention of marrying him and would not be an obstacle for them. Jobin continued, mentioning that she was far from Chen's first or last. These words did not surprise Jun in any way. Covering her eyes, she began to answer her with ease. They looked at each other, Mrs. Wu as if mocking her while Li looked on with seriousness. Jobin said that he didn't lie to her when he made Ching Ying his in one day, and the exact same thing happened to her. In her thoughts, Joan asked herself if she meant that they meant nothing to him. She concluded that the guy wanted to win Jobin's heart first. Chen was holding a weapon in his hand with people behind him. His appearance was shabby and dirty. Jobin was close to his face. The guy was holding a box with a ring in his hand with a stone shining on it. They looked joyful. With pretense, Lee said that she would only give Director Wu one chance. Jun wasn't particularly happy about it and asked where the aggression was coming from. Jobin again ordered Miss Wu to kneel down and apologize to her. At such words, the corners of her lips lifted, creating a smile on her face. She placed her hand on Jobin's shoulder, touching with the pads of her fingers. Lifting up on her toes, Jun smacked her forehead. Lee looked confused. Lee was horribly shocked by this and in her mind she didn't understand why she had done it. The woman was still slightly on her toes as well. She had different shoes from her usual room shoes. She answered her that she didn't know what she was talking about, thinking to herself that it was a debt of gratitude for the kiss from Chen. Taking the strand in her fingers, Yui apologized and asked if she was satisfied. Li was embittered at her. Her eyebrows were furrowed. She couldn't say anything to her. Jun decided to take it further and milled about how boring the night was without her. The guy looked pleased with Jobin and Jun beside him. Li seemed to be talking to him. The girl was confused, blushing slightly. She thought it was complete nonsense. Her interlocutor asked her if she felt the sincerity in her apology, and if it needed to be repeated. With anger, Lee replied to the one showing her respect by squeezing the fingers of her hand. Looking away from her, finding herself in her own thoughts, Jobin saw no point in continuing this conversation. Turning her back to her, Lee bid her farewell since she had nothing to add. Jun looked her way, thinking that they would either be sisters or keep each other at a distance. She chose the latter option.
With a thoughtful expression, she continued her thought with the fact that she couldn't resist Wu Chen. Jobin was riding in the car, talking to Chen on the phone. She asked why he was picking some people who weren't normal, who stood in some room and asked with interest what had happened. Li said she thinks she's even weirder than Ching Ying, and she doesn't want to discuss it anymore. After hanging up the phone, the guy began to think that Yui had done well and didn't let Zhou Bin get the upper hand. With a piercing look, his thoughts continued. He was sure that Yu Jun would not provoke Li after this. Walking up to Jun, the latter declared that she could handle something like this. Winking at him and looking cocky, Chen got a call. As soon as he heard that something had happened, worry appeared on his face. It turned out that old man Dao had escaped. The brother went into the room with other men, yelling at the crippled man how he could do such a thing on his property. The man was well beaten. He said nothing to his cries about how he had the courage to go against Chen and whether he would go against him. Tao swooped down on him, grabbing him by his blouse and angrily asking what he was up to. The man was silent as if pretending to be dead. The guy asked why he was playing deaf. He leaned the barrel against the man's temple. The man squirmed, and his brother asked him if he thought he didn't have the guts to pull the trigger. The red-haired man turned to him, saying that Chen was going to talk to him, and now was not the best time for such action. He agreed with him. Squeezing his eyes shut, he held the lighter, igniting the cigarette. Smoke was coming from his mouth. He turned his back and headed for the exit of the room with the other guys. While they were having a smoke break, someone entering the room shouted that a patient had disappeared somewhere. Tao flew into the room. The nurse repeated that the patient was missing and the man cursed at him angrily. The man pointed to the window, telling the guy that he probably jumped out of there. The boy went to the window, looking down. Mentally, he wondered how he could have gone down the iron pipe with such wounds. Speaking to you on the phone, he said the man could not have gotten far and sent his men after him. Chen holding up the phone incredulously asked if he was hiding something. The guy was beginning to think that Dao could only be influenced by Li Zhou Tai, so from his tone, he understands what happened. Tao anxiously began to say that things were not as he had put it. With a serious face, Chen replied that he understood and would find him, pulling away from the phone. As soon as he hung up, Zhou questioned why he did that and he wanted to help look too. Chen began to gather himself. Putting on his sweatshirt, he began to button the top button. The guy decided to put on his cap. Now his eyes were not visible. A slight smile was visible from under the visor. He was already behind the wheel of the car. The guy remembered where old man Dao might be and was sure that their meeting was inevitable. The sun was beginning to set. You could tell by the color of the sky. Not far from the more modern high-rise was an older one. It was the second street, the West Circle. The guy got out of his car, raising his gaze to the clouds lifting his cap. He walked towards some kind of door, thinking that it was Ding Rilong's hideout for his subordinates. Lowering his gaze to the floor, cigarette butts could be seen. In his thoughts, it was the only shelter that wasn't being used. Pulling his hand to the top of the counter, the guy started looking for something. Chen pulled out a key from there with a victorious smirk, thinking that Lao Dao was still here, which meant he was wearing a hospital gown. Guy opened the door, in his head warning the man that he would need a change of clothes and to avoid Tai's men. Walking into the room with an appraising glance, he noted that all the furniture was in place. Checking the table for dust, he concluded that there was none at all, which meant the place was cleaned often. He thought that everything had been thought out so as not to arouse any suspicion in this apartment. If anyone did come in, the guy walked over to the only place he hadn't checked, looking sternly. He picked up a small couch cushion, with the intention of flipping it over to his view. Turning it over, he found the snake. Taking the loop, Chen began to pull on it, undoing it. With a satisfied smile, holding in his hands, Wu took out a silver suitcase from there. He examined it, holding it in his hands, looking for either a lock or a circuit to enter the code. The code was wrong, but that wasn't a hindrance to the guy. In a thousand years, he'd learned how to open locks and cases. He started to inject something again with an air he was going. The man pointed his free hand at him angrily, holding the weapon there. He swung his weapon at him again, but the guy had no problem dodging it. Noticing who it was, Lao mentally told himself that he definitely wouldn't be defeated now. The man recalled taking a picture with the rest of his beaten partners. The guy said to relax, and if he wanted to, he'd be long gone, warning that he'd called an ambulance for his wounds. The man thought the guy didn't want to fight, which meant there was an opportunity to run away. Chen addressed him as Ma Ling Shan, asking if he wanted to talk to him. The man couldn't believe his ears. He was stoic and trying to figure out how Chen knew his real name. There was a man lying on the ground with a rag over his head, blood almost everywhere, and a van driving by. He looked incredibly angry, his eyebrows furrowed and his gaze directed somewhere. The man clutched the weapon in his hands, thinking that for the sake of his family he needed to fight him. Chen mused that maybe he was right about every man having to protect his family. He put the gun on the table, telling Dao he would give him a chance. Looking at the gun, 
The man came to the realization that he needed to take it away. Lao visualized him shooting at the guy's body without the slightest hesitation, hitting the target. Chen calmly looked in his direction, stating that he had the ability to kill him. Lao took the weapons in his hands, pointing them at the young man, but they were shaking very badly. He calmly turned to the old man, asking him if he was ready to play. The guy continued to stare at him further, paralleling his conversation. With a nervous expression, Lao wondered if he was left to rely on luck alone. The man didn't understand his actions, asking himself if he was trying to intimidate him. He started pulling something out of his jeans, that at close range all he had to do was pick up the weapon and fire. The man's hand reached for the weapon. He wondered if the guy doubted that he wouldn't dare kill him. Chen calmly said that it wasn't a game and he didn't tell anyone about him. The man seriously stated that it was useless to distract him. The guy said he just wanted to talk. Lao asked him what there was to talk about when he hadn't told even Li Tai Zhou anything. Chen said with a cold look, he is aware of the fact that he had to take Wang Ruidan's life. The man began to sweat from such words of his. A vein was showing on his forehead. He was angry. Chen smirked, his gaze indifferent to everything that was going on. The guy stared at another point, saying something to the man with a business-like expression. Lao's gaze softened slightly. He began to recall something after the young man's words. There was a guy lying on the ground, his face looking battered and someone standing next to him. The young man calmly mouthed that this was Rong Lun's second lever. The man said no matter what kind of leverage it was, he had no proof on Rong Lun. He thought the man was trying to make him betray the Ding family. He hit his fist in the back as if there was something there. You could see the object from his jeans. Lao walked over to the table, reaching out with his fingers to the handle of the gun. He picked up his weapon, pointing the gun directly at Chen, saying that they had nothing to talk about. The muzzle of the gun was right next to the guy's head. He only looked on with a kind of excitement. The man began to pick up some sort of pillow, asking his last words. He leaned the gun into the pillow for a quieter shot. He confidently held the pillow with the pistol, aiming it toward Chen. A shot rang out. The bullet flew past the guy's head. He didn't even change his face. The man was still holding the pillow with the gun, but there was a little smoke coming out of the pillow. Chen lowered his gaze, calmly replying that he believed in him and would not shoot. Thinking about the fact that there was not a hint of fear on his face, he marveled at such a man. He let go of the gun somewhere and the pillow where the gunshot mark had been. The man said since the guy was willing to bet his life he would believe him. W said he would show proof. Lao was surprised and asked if they really have them. The guy asked to sit down. Taking out his phone, Chen said that this person would have to lie to find out the truth. He looked questioningly at the guy and didn't understand his words. Wu held the phone in his hands, preparing to make a call. The guy said to call Jiang Anchuan and tell him that he escaped and tried to take Jobin hostage. Then asking about Antong, the man agreed. The person on the phone asked how he had tried to take Jobin hostage. Lao worried. Toth said he asked her not to touch her. Lao said he had to save his life that way. Chen listened to them curiously. The interlocutor was not happy, at which point Lao reminded him that he knew all the dirty deeds of the Ding family and that the same one had killed in Tong. The guy gave a thumbs up, either alluding to himself or supporting the man. He was asked how he knew about it. The man was surprised at such a question. Chen snatched the phone out of the speaker's hands, pointing it toward him. Picking up the phone, he turned to John Chuan. He was asked what he was doing next to Lao Li. The guy asked if Ding Rui Lun had headed to his hometown for the sake of meeting Master Ding. The man stood in a daze, wondering if the injury was the reason why the young master had returned to his hometown. A man appeared in front of him, holding a weapon towards him. Thinking that the Ding and Lin family might become enemies, he should have waited for the master to return to complete the plan. Chen only wished good luck. Hanging up the phone after such a conversation, he started to say that Jiang Chuan would not say anything to the Ding family. Perhaps there would be nothing left of his faith. The guy continued, looking into his phone that he wouldn't want to die and his wife and child were overseas and Chuan's accounts were full of foreign money. His phone had the location on it. Chen said to have Lao Li's men ready to capture him there. He agreed to his condition after all such people dared to take on Tun's life. The man turned at the strange sounds outside the door, asking himself what was going on. With disbelief, Lao looked at Chen, wondering if he was up to something else. 